God. <laughs> just, it, I, I don't oh. believe this. He's got, one day he's got it. Carl's really grumpy and all stressed because he didn't have the record. We didn't want to play a rap, so I won't say it, we didn't want to play a certain record he had lined up because it's rubbish. I know, but you uh, do this every week. Because it's, because the most of them are rubbish, so that's why we choose up. No, but 30 seconds to go on the tracking saying don't want to play that. And you're going, oh, it's stressing me out. You're meant to be at our beck and call. We've, we've, we've got made you, out, you. We've made you. We got you out the gutter. And now you're getting the greatest mind in the world yeah, and all that. That doesn't mean you can mess me about. If you were a doctor and you saved me life, yeah. right? There comes a point. In a so way, we have, Carl. Yeah. Uh, Where were you go going? On, go on, go on, go on. What was he going to say? He was going to say something wise then. No, I was going to say, right, if 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 you were a doctor yeah. and you'd saved me life, yeah. there's only so much that I could give back to you, right? Okay. What I would be unreasonable? What would be unreasonable? Well, you know, forget a doctor. Don't forget to because no, no, the doctor's that's its job, right? Supposing I was just I was just walking along and I saved your life. I gave you a kidney, or I, you know, resuscitated you, or I, or I dived into icy water. What, what, what could I hope from you then before you start going? Hold on, hold on. What, what would you, what would you be willing to do for me until you sort of got, lo you know, lost your rag a little bit because I was asking too much. So uh, didn't I know you before you've like sorted a lung out for me? <laughs> no, I right. just gave you a lung, for example. Well, I'd be a bit sort of. I'd be thinking, why has he done that? This is vicious! But what I love though, Rick, is the idea of you <laughs> jumping in icy water to save someone, giving them a lug. I can guarantee if someone was lying on the floor screaming they needed your help, you'd affect a foreign accent and go, I know, understand, <laughs> and run no, off. Do you know what I did once, right? <laughs> we went out a few weeks ago, right, and some woman had her handbag nicked, and she was all distressed. He said, Ch Ch chase the fella, Carl. <laughs> you stop <laughs> <like, laughs> You stop <laughs> <like>. <laughs> You, that's you not let's be honest. Yes, Look at, imagine true. Ricky chasing a criminal. Look at yeah. his little legs. He'd never get yeah. anywhere. Well, he, he started to run and then he passed Starbucks or something and nicked <laughs> <laughs> for a short How break. did this turn on me? <laughs> oh, I'm a bad man because I don't give lungs away. No, because uh, no one would want my kidneys or my lungs for a start. I, I, I know. Oh, did you dear. chase the criminal then? I did no. for a bit. He walked. No, you didn't. Did you? No, I did a little bit. Yeah, we, we'd sort of spread out. What we missed him. Where was it and what was the situation? It was Did you see a bag get snatched or it something? Was no, she was, she was sort of crying and she was running. Uh, um, some blokes came in, sat next to her and then just ran off with her purse. And um, and uh, you walked after them? No, no, they'd gone, Steve. They'd, I mean, right. they're, they're, yeah, they're, they'd actually gone, but um, it was just like a bit distressing because she was, she was <coughs> devastated. I know how she feels as well because I had um, a jacket and you think, oh, I've oh, just got to find them now. Yeah. Where are they? Who are they? You know, so she was really off her head with sort of like, she was angry and sort of crying. Yeah. And it was horrible. It was horrible, wasn't it? Wasn't it, Carl? He's broken his mic now. <laughs> oh, right. Play record, this Carl. Is, this Carl, is what are you doing, mate? You I don't believe this. this. There's, there's only two weeks to go. These should be special. Carl, play the record. We've asked you to play the record. Like you. Play the life. Hives, main offender on XFM 104.9. I forgot to say who I was. Go on, who Ricky are you? Ricky Gervais, who are Obviously. you? Steve Merchant. And who's that for, little fella over there, little L round fella? Tiny little Carl Pilkington. The funny little thing from the Smash adverts. <laughs> say, <laughs> with their, they smash them with their metal knives. Oh. You do? I was, I, yeah, you're right. He does, he does doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was asking if I'd seen a rounder head than him, and that's the only one someone come up with. That's the only <laughs> thing yeah, they come yeah. up with. Oh, look. Oh, look, you're actually a little bit stressed there, aren't you? Because you had a drink last night, didn't you? I had a couple of drinks. Yeah. I was down at Steve's night. Doing yeah. He was doing a bit of DJ. Yeah. Went down the store. And that's why you're all grumpy. Shh, 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 shh. Did you hear what he just said? What? I was DJing last night. Obviously that talking? XFM evening. Yeah, yeah. Hour and a half. My friend and I split the time on the decks. Yeah. What, what was the word you just used? He went down a storm. We went down a storm. Right, three girls, I was walking to the toilets uh, during my set, three girls went, you are a genius. <laughs> Right? De uh, what's his name? Is Dane Bowers? Yeah, Zane Lowe? Because you played records in a certain order. Yes. <laughs> no, sorry, Rick. Sorry, Rick, if you can't deal with that. Sorry uh, if you're a little bit jealous, because uh, this time you can't share the award. Uh, All right? Oh, dear. It's but it was my uh, credit this you time. You can tell uh, he hasn't been a DJ. Because uh, it's, it's not just about... It's not just about that. The songs you play, it's the way you play them. Oh, the yeah. way you play them, whether right. it's 33 or 45, <laughs> yeah, very yeah. important. Yeah, we <laughs> leave your hand on exactly. them as they're trying to go round. But, uh, but so, so three girls there, yeah. charmed by me, they loved it. Yeah. Um, Zane Lowe, mm. XFM DJ and MTV presenter, probably one of the coolest blokes alive. He came yeah. up, gave us massive respect. <laughs> he said, I'm loving your set. 
<laughs> he actually used those words, right? <laughs> there were people coming up, they couldn't believe their luck. It was yeah. roaring. We'd stick on a track, people yeah. would cheer as it came on, right? Yeah. My particular favourite, Carl, I think you'll agree, my particular triumvirate, NL Cool J, Mama Said Knock You Out, leading yeah. straight into House of Pain, Jump Around, then straight into that current Elvis track that's been re-released, remixed yeah. by Junkie XL. I played the original, which I'd already played on XFM before. I'm already there, cutting edge. Yeah. Right? Three, and what, three old tracks, you mean? Three old tracks. In a row? Yep. And, um, what well, I think the words that would best sum it up are, I kicked ass. <laughs> Great. Rick. All right? Well, I'm going to be kicking some ass today because I'm, I'm going to be shamelessly self-indulgent. Mm. And, uh, we've only got two shows to go, so I'm playing some of the most beauteous tunes in the world. And I was just telling Carl, lined up a Simon and Garfunkel track, Only Living Boy in New York. He went, why is he the only living boy in New York? I went, what? He went, what does that mean then? I went, I don't know. He went, well, what's it about? I said, I, I don't, I don't care. I said, it's, it's lovely sound. Go, no, but what's it? I said, I don't go into that. Do I said, w I, he went, I like, I like a story. I said, like, what? I said, killing a Georgie. No trickery. <laughs> killing of Georgie. I think oh. we should play that at the last. It's good. I heard it the other day on radio too. It's it was cracking. It sounds yeah. like, well. It's really good. Tell them what it's about again. It's about, um, a little girl, uh, gay fella. <laughs> a little what? A, a little gay fella? Yeah. Right. Who, um, I mean, I haven't heard it for a bit, so it's all off memory, this. But, yeah. um, yeah. gay bloke, uh, is he from Scotland? I have no idea. But he's from somewhere where gays aren't liked. Okay. Right? No, 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 no. No, well, he is. Georgie Boy was gay, I guess, nothing more than the kindest guy I ever knew, right? Now, all he, all he did was, right, his father said, how can my son not be straight? Kicked him out, right? Goes to America. Yeah, 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 but you can handle yeah. all that. You can handle your dad not getting on with you if other people around you are into the same scene. Yeah, but that's he, right. But he was like, he was left on his own. He didn't know what to do. Yeah. He was getting stressed out. Yeah. So he goes. And this I was before, know. like, this was before. I mean, this is what? When did this record come out? Seventy-seven. Seventy-seven. Yeah. Seven, seven, yeah. Seven, yeah. Like that. Right, right, right. And um, he's doing he's, punk. Right. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so he, you know, the village people had come along and made gay cool. Yeah. That had already <laughs> happened. Yeah. But cool. it wasn't respected. But. He was watching the telly or something, and he saw that New York had loads of them over there, and they're all having a good time. Sure. No, th sorry. At no point in the song does Rod Stewart say little little gay Georgie was watching telly and saw loads of gays in New York. At no point in that song. No, but this is what I like about that song. You sort of picture what's going on. You make it up. Yeah. Okay. So let's so the little gay fellow was watching telly, and there was a there was a, presumably a, the uh, the and now from New York the gay show. Yeah. Or whatever, because it was a big scene over there, wasn't he, in the 70s? Yeah. Okay. Right. Go on. So he, uh, he goes over there, and, uh, he's having a great time and that. He's meeting, he went to New York Town, meeting, very quickly settled down, soon became them. the toast of the Great White Way. Yeah, they loved him. All down. the old Queens blew a fuse. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I don't know, he was, he was out late one night. Yeah. And he, he's walking home. Yeah. And, uh, gets attacked, gets killed, yeah. and he's lying in the They gutter. didn't intend to take his life, they just put Sarah, like, a little too far that night. Yeah, you see? So. Yeah. But what's good there? Is it is it good that he had a bit of a good life and w was able to be himself? Yeah. Or should he have stayed in Scotland? He didn't come from Scotland. Again, I, I really- well, I think, can, is there any way we can get this song before the end of the show and play it? Because I've, I've heard it recently. A lot of people listening will have never heard this song. They won't have any idea can what I, Can about. I say what you said when we were talking about that song once before? Is it bad? It mi It might be. Because we were talking about, you know, Georgie Boy, and he, you know, got it. I don't know. What? It's when you said... Well, it's a fact. I don't think if Well, he said, so it's a fucking Georgie, he gets out, he gets out, he dies, right? He goes, well, they do go out late. <laughs> I know. Well, he, gay people I go out late. I know a few gay people and they start to party late on. That's yeah. why, in Soho, right? Yeah. Girlfriend got in a cab, right? Suzanne was in a cab, and the cab driver <laughs> was taking her to an early start, right? She works at the BBC. <laughs> yeah. Early start, four in the morning. It was going down. It was mental in Soho at four in the morning. Yeah. They were all still like start starting the night out. How yeah. do you know Whereas, they? How do you know they It's Soho, isn't it? Fair enough. Okay. Play a track. I love this. We have to try and dig this, this is, out. Uh, yeah, we will. This is uh, Simon and Garfunkel, the only living boy in New York. It's it's lovely. Mm -hmm. Only Living Boy in New York. Do you like that? It's got a nice feel to it. Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah. Lovely. Um, a bit later I'm gonna be playing the Cat Steven track. It's one of the most beautiful tracks ever written. It's called Lily White off Mona Bone Jack on. Look forward to that. We've got Eminem coming up. We've had, we've got the new Eminem single as well. And, uh, a big giveaway, Rick, lest we forget. I think we should tell them what that is. Do you think so? Yeah, well, we, we all went to the BAFTAs, as you know. 
and uh, we thought we could get a good prize out of this, so we got some celebs yes. to sign the BAFTA bag they gave away. It's just a, it's just a nice big chunky sort of cardboard carrier bag, you know. It's not the value that counts. This is what values it. Read out the sort of names. These we got, are Steve. the kind of celebrity names that have signed that bag. Obviously, us three, plus Graham Norton. Yeah. Angus Staten signed it. Alan Davis, Jonathan Creek, Jamie Theakston, Paul Whitehouse. A lot of comedians, you notice. Helen Baxendale from Cold Feet, who's also been in Friends, right? Uh, <laughs> I don't know why that's so exciting. Steve Phil Mitchell McFadden. Yeah. It's an eclectic bag. I notice actually that Steve's signature is also mentioned. I think he says Steve, aka Phil Mitchell. Which is very nice of him. Yeah. Um, Peter Davison, former, uh, former Doctor Who. I noticed also that when you gave him the pen to sign it, he put the pen away. Yeah, he pocketed it. We had to say, oh, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. Just his wily you, cockney you, ways. You're not Phil Mitchell now, exactly. mate. Give us the pen back. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Simon Pegg, and of course, one of broadcasting's biggest legends, Steve Wright. Oh, Steve yeah, Wright, got yeah. got him to sign it as well. Yeah, yeah. But that's, you know, you're not gonna find that. That's quite an eclectic and kooky mixture of celebrity names. Yeah. You know, autographs yeah. on one bag. And we maybe photocopy it and it's just, you can't we make can that explain who they are. Can they are. But we can uh, give that away. Uh, and as you know, it's a little commemorative thing of the BAFTA. It's got a big BAFTA logo on there and everything. It's pretty yeah. classy. I, I, did, did I mention this? That our agent, yeah. who was there, he ran around getting a few of these uh, autographs. And I think he held him back to a few. He went up to him and told him it was for charity. And that was why they signed it. Oh. Which I think is. You know, a little bit cheeky, but that's what agents are like, Carl. Oh, you've got to But then again, he didn't that. get anything from him. It's not like he said, give us a pound. No, he just got things. Well, well, he said that as well. <laughs> <laughs> did he? Yeah. he? made 42 yeah, yeah, quid. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, so anyway, we're gonna give that away. We're, is we're that a good prize? I think that's a nice prize, isn't it? It's a little commemorative yeah, thing. Carl, you're turning your nose up on it. No, what? no, it's, it's, it's alright. I wouldn't want it. Oh, oh. Didn't he? Do, do people get you to sort of do campaigns on the radio, like, drink Fosters? I wouldn't, but... You know, no, you can. Yeah, but look, I know it's on the uh, the big board here. It tells us that uh, uh, this, you can win signed and framed Chemical Brothers album covers on Sunday. Well, that's just two geeks who've signed that. We've got like we've some got of three alone yeah. in this room. Exactly. Plus, we've got some of uh, you know Britain's the cream of Britain's light entertainment who've signed that bag. I just no, no. It's I'm appalled by you that you're just so disrespectful of no, us. No, but it's we, like how when when I went to the Bafters with you and I wasn't really enjoying it. You were I like, can't. He's that what? No, you can't tell, tell us this. Grateful. You're well, so I, many people. You're like a little charity case. You're like, oh, I God. had chicks queuing up yeah. around the block. You'd usually have to, have to you, know, someone like you, you would have to write to Jim or fix it or has to ransom to get um, to meet us sort of people. And now it's on your doorstep. I'm amazed that you didn't enjoy it. Why didn't God. you enjoy it? You got to walk down the red carpet. You went in. There was George Best, one of your footballing heroes, was there. A that load of other good. big names. We, you sat there in prime position. You came backstage with a load of other big names. Hey, you had a lovely bit of grub. You were filming this thing for the DVD you were making. That's you. That's you, a cameraman on our DVD. And yet you think, oh, and you, now you look grumpy because you had a couple of pints and you've, oh, I can't believe so it. So tell us why you didn't enjoy it, because the ceremony, what didn't you enjoy about that? Far it was interminable, wasn't it? Far too long. Wasn't it awful? Three so boring. hours. I'm sorry. I thought you were going to say something. Really? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Three hours. Yeah. Um. I mean, I suppose for you two, at least, you know, you were gonna get something. Sure. Yeah. But, <laughs> with me, it's like, I mean, I've never graduated or anything, so. Have you not? I'm trying to think of, of a situation. Basically, I sat there three hours knowing that I'm not gonna get anything out of the night. Yeah. Right? Now. <laughs> <laughs> no did you, trying. sorry, when we invited you and you said yes, did you think you were up for an award? <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought. I thought we were going to be sat round tables, having a nice yeah. bit of food, yeah. whilst people are going up there winning awards. Yeah. But three hours of the same thing over and over again. I mean, if a film's three hours in the cinema, yeah. you go, well, it's long, but, you know, I wonder how it's going to end. Yeah. But this was just like the same <laughs> thing over and over again. Some guy going up, thanks a lot, cheers for the bit of brass. And mm. then going down, sitting down, the same thing over and over again. Mm. I wouldn't, uh, honestly, right? I'd say it was one of the worst things I've ever had to do. <laughs> I cry! Link it no, up! I enjoyed the night afterwards when we did have a bit of lamb and a nice bit of veg and that. That was yeah. alright and I went home and I was happy and I got the, the little freebie bag that you're talking about that we gave yeah. away. Yeah. Um, which wasn't much good stuff in it. Oh, alright! Oh, right. No, what, Suzanne, what would you have done right. on that Saturday night? Suzanne what would you have done if, or the Sunday night rather, what would you have done had you been at home? I would have stayed in with Suzanne, right, watching telly, having a nice bit of pate on toast or something, cup of tea, watching 24, but instead I had to buy an expensive suit so I didn't show you up, <laughs> right? <laughs> I did as well, I did. 
<laughs> yeah. How much did you spend on your suit? Well, in total, right, because, you know, the shoes and the suit and the shirt and the tie, it was about 600 quid. <laughs> That's the most expensive evening ever. <laughs> and that's, well, that's what I'm saying to you. <coughs> and the daft thing is, it's dark in there. I don't know why you've got to wear a nice suit. You can't, you can't <laughs> wear a track suit, for goodness sake. It's dark in there. Oh, oh, oh. No, just the shirt and that. It doesn't oh. make you a better person wearing a suit. No, it doesn't you make you a better mean? person, no. We're not that's claiming it made you a better person. No, well, that annoyed me. Yeah. Um. I mean, it was, it was an experience, innit? That's why I went, because you think, if I didn't go, if I would have said to you when you invited me, no, Steve, I don't want to go, then I would have never known, right? Yeah. And yeah. I've, I've, uh, that, that's my sort of thing in life, right? Yeah. If yeah. something comes up, you should take it, even if you're not going to like it, it's a bit of an experience. Right. And you know what he said to me? I phoned him up, because we had to meet up, yeah. and obviously he had to pose as my, uh, gay lover. Yeah. To get in, right? Yeah. He phoned me, what, you said something to me like, I bought a suit, I'm looking good. He said, I'm looking good. <laughs> People will think, how on earth did he end up with that good looking guy? <laughs> so he got into the yeah. role. That was what he said to me. He's getting into it. Such an insult. Fair record. I just must say that we've had an email from Daryl Foss. Lots of people have emailed in and said, well done on the BAFTAs and, and well done on your room 101. They really liked that. Thank you. There's one guy and it's Daryl says, uh, Ricky, has your dad only got one D-mob suit? Because <laughs> <laughs> I know you know it's been Ricky wears the same suit every single time he appears on TV because he spent a fortune on it getting it tailor made. <laughs> I've only got one. It's a good suit and I he know. wears it all the time. And it's winter as well. It's like a pure wall so I'm sweating <laughs> everywhere I go. Anyway, usually it's too much cheese. I won't so, be buying another. Huh? I won't be buying another one. Ever. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Suzanne told me today, right, because I've, I've gotten, I've, I've handed it in today to have the uh, trousers turned up a bit. Why? Because it was a bit of a bodge job for the night. Yeah. Right. It was just some pins sort of holding it up the other night, but you didn't notice and I didn't tell you because I thought you'd be getting on the stage and saying, look at that freak over there. <laughs> <laughs> With his pants hemmed up. But I took it, I took it to the, to the place to get it done. Suzanne tells me that I'm gonna start shrinking now and get into that age where you start going small. <laughs> I know that that must have been a revelation to you and a worry. <laughs> like, how small do you get? <laughs> how small do you get? Mm -hmm. Oh, don't right, what are we playing then? Well, I thought we'd have a bit of Marley music. Marley music? Oh, okay, okay go on. Baddy drawn boy and something to talk about. Well, it's a good job we've got something to talk about because we're DJs on it. FM one and four point nine. I'm a DJ with Stephen Merchant. Across there, Carl Belkin. How are you doing? Of course, you, you must have been excited at the BAFTAs because we did m bump into Doctor Fox. Oh yeah. You're pleased with that? Yeah. What was the challenge again? I think the challenge we was you had to shout Foxy. Yeah, the challenge was it's sort of like jackass but <laughs> wimpy jackass. Carl was our um, cameraman for the night because we we're doing the making of. Um, Sort of series two where we've we've filmed ourselves sort of writing it and doing bits and pieces and going to wars on it, and uh, it's on me. And my challenge, which I, I think was it me that set my own <laughs> challenge, you did. I had to shout Foxy and get him over. Yeah. And I bottled out you about bottled. five times. I just thought he was talking to someone. Yeah. And I just thought, and then I did it. And it, I just, where's the victory in that? Yeah. I shouted Foxy and he came over and went, all right. Do I, I think where's the victory? Oh, I remember just they dive off buildings and things. I was a little bit taken aback though, because even though he was joking and mucking around, he was swearing. You don't expect that from Foxy. I'll be if he was like, he was off oh, duty. No, he was. I mean, he's more than wrong, but he didn't expect it to, because he, he seemed like a lovely bloke though. But he, he has is. got an enormous head. I mean, I'm not gonna. But I'm, I'm not disrespecting him. That. I think he's a lovely guy, but yeah. his head is huge. But he's in proportion with his big body as well. He's a big. He's a chunky wombat of a man. <laughs> True enough. And as so am I. It was problem getting him on on screen. Sure, because of the huge head. Yeah, I was struggling. No, I know. Well, I know the Popeye <laughs> people have worries about that. I uh, had to get special lenses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love the fact that us three freaks can take woo, this woo, out woo. of anyone. Stop what? there, though, Rick, because um, I was on TV briefly. There was a thing about The Office on uh, Top Ten TV Bastards on yeah. Channel Four, and I appeared on there briefly talking about the show. And um, there was this girl who's a girlfriend of a friend of mine, and she's and she's. I saw you on TV last night. I went, yeah. She went, I tell you this, you're better looking on TV than you are in real life, and that's good for you. And I went, I went, I was like. Oh, I, I don't know if that was a compliment because it's Definitely like not. Well, I, I'm not on TV, so it's it's not yeah. beneficial in any way. <laughs> yeah, but that's like too right. You have to step out of the TV. But that's like saying I normally find you pretty repulsive. Yeah, I am opinion changed slightly last night because you were on the box. Yeah, and I didn't. Know, it, it sounded like it was a compliment. <laughs> through, the, through the aid of a different yeah, yeah through the, the aid of lighting. <laughs> yeah, and. Appearing like ev for twelve seconds on screen in small doses. Oh God! You thought I wasn't as bad looking oh. as I am. In real a lot life. of people have phoned in and and, uh, and wondered if you are morph grown up because they've seen a picture of you <laughs> on the website. Do you mean me or Carl? <laughs> Carl, right? Yeah. What do you mean? No, because uh, people have seen you uh, next to a picture of morph, and it's exact. If you draw, honestly, Carl, 
if you lay you down and draw around you, it's exactly the same shape as Morph. Yeah. Some, uh, or the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> or, yeah, Gingerbread Man. <laughs> <laughs> You do look like a gingerbread man. That's great. <laughs> oh, man. I love Carl. I lo we think you're brilliant. We like looking at you, talking to you, hearing what you've got to say. We think of you, don't we, yeah. in the week sometimes? Rick, I had a bit of a good news this morning. Go on. And I don't mean this in any way. I'm sure it's an emotional thing for her. But uh, in the sun, it says that Dido, uh, her wedding's off. Right. Just thinking, ding dong. <laughs> Because for some reason, I don't know what it is, I was having a chat with my mates, I've always been under the assumption I could pull do Dido. Because she's... Because she's quite ordinary, do you know yeah. what I mean? She looks a bit ordinary, she's quite an attractive one, but like... Would that you be your opening chat-up line? <laughs> you look quite ordinary. Dido, I don't think you could probably get anything better than me, yeah. because you're not too hot yourself. <laughs> exactly. My name's Steve I'd go, Merchant. I'd wear, I, I, actually, what I'd do is I'd go, right, I'm not going to meet you in the flesh, but no, I'm going to send a video, video on video. Yeah, yeah this is me great. on Top TV Masters, what <laughs> yeah. do you think? <laughs> See what you think. Yeah. And if you think it's good, well, I'm certainly no worse without the lighting and makeup, <laughs> so don't worry about that. Exactly. Oh. Oh, Dido. Do you have a little bit of Bowie? Do you have a little bit Bowie? What was your thing about Dido, that uh, she's like a kind of... She's a bit like a receptionist. Who she? got up and sang once because she had karaoke, tunes, and uh, a bloke came up. Uh, I'm uh, Gridlin Records. I'm thinking <laughs> of releasing a CD, and it just goes yeah. mental. Exactly, everyone buys it. Yeah, it's good though, isn't it? But she should be doing photocopying or filing. <laughs> do you not think? Just the way she looks, she's got that very kind no, of suburban look. The whole look. look thing annoys me. Do you know there's another pop stars thing starting? Yeah, right, it's going on in, in in Ireland. Apparently, it's it's Ireland's version of it. Okay. And today it was like you, you saw all these kids rushing in. There was fat ones there and ugly kids, and you're thinking. It's sad and everything, they might have a good voice, but there's no chance, <laughs> right? And there was a woman there who looked a bit like Brittany, and the bloke, straight away before even hearing the voice, uh, Brittany looking like over there, go and get her in, give her a ticket, she's through to the next phase. And it's just annoying. Dido isn't beautiful, but I, she's nice enough. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, that's why she's fine for me. I mean, I, I you know, she, you you know, know I mean, my standards are quite low. So do you think Steve should go out with her then? I mean, that's what <laughs> we're asking you. Do you think he should? Yeah. Okay, so that we're bowie. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Carl. Try and fix that for next week. <laughs>Played that last night, Rick, during the set. Yeah. Uh, that was described by uh, Zane Lowe as uh, one of the best sets he's ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't say those No, 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 but I, I, I think uh, Zane just sent an email and said he's giving up because there's no point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If, if, when he hears stuff like that, he said, I, I, I thought I was a DJ. Yeah. After seeing Steve Merchant, I'm obviously not. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. No, so, uh, yeah, big boy uh, Jim was down there. Yeah, he, big uh, boy Jim was going, wow, I've, uh, you know. I don't know what I'm thinking. Yeah. But I like the idea because, you know, uh, Fat Boy Slim did uh, Brighton Beach, didn't he? And he had like 20,000 people in Brighton Beach. Yeah. His channel, everyone was loving it. Just the idea of me down in Western Supermare doing the same with, with 80, the donkeys. 86 the people. Have you, <laughs> <ever> seen, <laughs> have you ever seen that thing, karaoke challenge on exactly. like, Chinese TV? Yeah. It's oh, great. Yeah. They're all doing it. And it's sort of like um, Jonathan, what's his name from Jonathan Bread Morris, and, yeah. and all, all those sort of uh, people there. And the, the camera falls out and there's about eight people there. Yeah. But what I love about karaoke challenge is it's not even night fever. <laughs> <laughs> Do you imagine that? I mean, talk about. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> oh dear. We tried to get on that once, didn't we? On Karaoke Challenge? Yeah, when we were doing that comedy yeah, we lab. Oh, we were, we were doing in character, yeah, wasn't we? Yeah, we were doing it, yeah, it's David so Bowie. We, so we'd have a little bit of footage, but yeah, that'd they, be uh, great. Yeah, they wouldn't that, even let that you That was on. terrible. I that was how minor a celebrity you were at the time. I remember once, right, this is how sad we were, we tried for about an hour to get on the Chris Moyle show. They were doing a competition, he was doing this competition. Um, uh, it was about golf, wasn't it? So it was like things with, uh, um, it was, no, it was, yeah, it was, you had to think of a, a song title, yeah. but you had to make it into a, a golfing pun. And people were calling up and going, now what about Drive by the Cars? He was going, Drive by the Cars, very good. And it was like, uh, uh, uh things like, you know what I mean? Things like something T and that. And I wanted to phone up and go, hello, Chris Miles, yeah, you know, what about, um, Spandau Valley Golfy Golfy? <laughs> Just me. <laughs> and I was just like, we tried. We must, I was just about oh, 30 quid to just to get on and do something stupid. How perfect. And they wouldn't even let us on. What yeah. were the others? It's a good game, that. What? Oh, oh, God. Phone in if you've got any amusing puns on oh, songs golf. and golf. Yeah, please. What did you say? What was it? A Spandau Valley Golfy <laughs> Golfy. <laughs> uh, yeah, do you like that one? It's a good, game, good little game. Uh, yeah, you're thinking, you're thinking of. What are you doing, Carl? You're thinking on the radio. That's what you're doing. <laughs> it's a first. You're actually broadcasting thinking. Can we just be quiet and just listen to Carl think? Yeah. Oh. Anything?
Got anything uh, there? Any golfing puns? You know, it, it, some pe- people say, Carl, it's impossible to catch yourself not thinking. Now, I reckon if there's one man in the world, hole in my shoe, that fella in the young ones, hole, <laughs> and there's one on a golf course. <laughs> Has he got a little cold as well? Because you're, yeah, you're I'm f- I, well, I was telling uh, Steve before I went on the tube last Saturday night. Yeah, it kills me. There's, there's every time I go on the tube, uh, I just get full of a cold and everything. I'm full of flu, and it's it's down to going on the tube. Is it? Is Someone it? told me that every time you go on the tube, it's the equivalent of smoking two cigarettes. Really? Because of the, the sort of gunk and pollution down there. And have you heard the other one? And, and, and I always smoke two cigarettes yes. on the tube. Yeah. yeah. It's in my nerves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's the name one about the, uh... Oh, there you go. All the air, all like the hairballs that are in the tubes. Right. Because oh, yeah. of like people stood on the platform, mm. trains go whizzing past at high yeah. speeds. Yeah. Right? Takes a bit of your hair off. Don't say anything. <laughs> 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 what, what, you mean don't question the science of that? Well, no, he means... Because of my It doesn't head. affect him. Oh, I see, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And, um, apparently they all get caught up in the, in the tunnels and they have to, like, clean it out now and again because there's big hairballs on the, on the lines. It's a, d- on the lines? On the, on the, on the train lines. Right. Yeah, it's a terrible place. So that's why I'm all bunged up and that's, when you came in today, I was, like, looking on the websites to see huh. how much badness there is down in the streets. <laughs> yeah. How much badness is there? Oh, loads. Is there a lot of badness? <laughs> if you know how much badness there is on the tube, call in 0870. What sort of things eight, eight, one, two, three, four. How much badness is there? It was just about, you know, the germs, how there's no fresh air, and that's why I was asking you about people committing suicide on, on trains and that, how often it happens, and apparently two people, uh, a week. Was it two, two a week or two you a day? Two, it was two cigarettes, how many people is it? Two oh, people. 700, 800, 1234, how many people per cigarette is it like <laughs> killing yourself on the tube? <laughs> Call in. Two people a week try and kill themselves or something. Right. On the tubes. Really? Yeah. yeah, it is. Terrible. Should we play a record? <coughs> if you want. Have we got the big new Eminem single? No, I was gonna, uh... Oh, we'll, we'll tease them with that. We'll play that a bit later. We are gonna play it, though. We're gonna play the new <laughs> Eminem single. We will. Plus, of course, obviously we've got this big, uh, celebrity bag to give away as well. The oh, yeah, let me just... Quick, well, no, 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 let's, let's play no, the, the, the competition after that. Doves. Doves would be good. Eminem, without me, on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Hello there. there. Little Carl Pilkington. Into the last hour, three hours of broadcasting to go, Carl, for us. Three. Uh, yeah. What three are you going to be doing Three musketeers. Because you'll obviously still be working here. You have a day job, don't you? What is it you do exactly? I make stuff. You make stuff? Like what, like furniture? Promos and stuff. Oh, right, right, right. Sort of a bit of in-talk there, but basically like little trails for the station. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's what I do all week. Yeah. Uh... So you'll be back to doing that when we're off. You well, don't talk to anyone, do you, in the week? You just hide in your little sound booth thing and you really don't talk to anyone, do you, much? Not really. No. no I mean, you, you know, you might call up. Yeah. Uh, but no, I keep myself to myself. Yeah. Then you don't get bogged down in the office politics and stuff. Sure. Yeah. Is there don't a lot know. of office politics here? I don't know. I don't get involved in it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Proved your point. So, so, so when um, we're away and we're like out of action, uh, uh, other than Suzanne, who will you talk to of the day? How will you get a sort of uh, uh, f- feedback from the world? How will you get sort of like input and? I always, if I've ever, uh, if ever I've got like a, a question on anything, the internet's sat there and I can just go on online and find out. The what internet I is is good. It's brilliant. But it, it's not all verified. What do you mean? It's not all verified. It's not all factually, necessarily factually accurate. Anyone can put things onto the internet. It's the, you know, it's, it's, it's freaks and things that put on well, here's things one, right? like... Well, here's, here's one that I read in the week, right? One. <laughs> About this woman. Yeah. Uh, she was a bit of a punk. And, um, to get her hair done like she wanted it. Super glue. Right, no. She mm. got lard. Apparently it's a popular thing, you might, you might know. Um, put lard on your head. Yeah. And you put it in the oven. <laughs> now... Apparently the heat that you get from the oven is different from the sort of heat you get from an air dryer, right? And she had to do that to get the style that she wanted. But anyway, uh, she comes into money or whatever, treats herself to a microwave, right? It doesn't, it's not true. Carl. Opens the door, jams the things, you know, like the little catch, so, so the microwave works. She jams it with a screwdriver or a knife or something. Yeah. Puts the microwave on, sticks her head in, boils her brain. 
don't be ridiculous. <laughs> right. Well, why is that ridiculous? <laughs> Boils her brain. She boiled her brain. <laughs> She boiled her brain. And this is what's good about the internet. I went straight from that and there was a subject about brains. And do you know that Russell Gr Crowe, when he dies, is, is given his, his brain to charity or something? Some sort of... <laughs> some people who can do stuff right. with it. She gave hers to Pot Noodle. <laughs> Vesta. Yeah. Oh, That's boiling the a skull. Yeah. That's, that's not true. No. It's not true, Carl. It's the same as the woman who put her poodle in the microwave, isn't it, and all just that. just urban myths. They're but, urban myths. But again, where does it start? Someone made it up. Yeah. For a laugh. They're, they're just too convenient, urban myths. Everyone to- it, you can tell an urban myth not to really go, cos it's always, this happened to a mate of mine, and- and- the, and the, when you say what happened then, they go, don't know, that was it. Was it? Was that it? Was it? Someone boiled a brain and that was it. There was no <laughs> more story. Well, it, 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 the, uh, there's, there's, there's were there what, any dates, have locations, you, have it, times? Uh, I think it was in Belgium. There's that, there's that, there's that one. <laughs> 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 there's that one that a bloke, right, was gonna get a phone call at four o'clock to find out if his business was, you know, okay, right? And if, if he didn't get the phone call, he knew he was um, broke, destitute. So, uh, 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 dead on four o'clock, the phone didn't ring, so he went up to the the, the roof, his office, and he jumped off to commit suicide. And as he was passing his window, the phone was ringing. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, it didn't happen. Didn't happen. Think it through. Think it through. Who, who, who told that story? Who told that story? As he hit the pavement at 120 miles an hour. He's the only person who could have known those, that series of incidents. Also, why didn't and he wait? Dead. As his life's at stake, why didn't he wait till five past? I say I'm gonna give it five minutes just in just case. Just in case the lines I, are busy. Yeah. And this, one? and what sort of, what other sort of bloke goes out, I'll call you at four, okay, if your business, well call me anyway. No, no, if I don't call exactly four then, uh, no, you yeah. commit suicide. Commit suicide. <laughs> I would because if I don't call at four, oh, that's the end of it. Well call me anyway. No, that's not the way I work. <laughs> why can't he just call me and tell me the other way? Well, I'm telling you I would do it. <laughs> if you're bust, I don't call. Can't you just call to verify in case something goes wrong? What if it's engaged? It won't be engaged. <laughs> just commit suicide at four, please. <laughs> it it didn't happen, Carl. Have you the other one, right? A bloke, right? Uh, he's he's on a uh, train station, and uh, uh, I tell you, how I heard it. Um, uh, he's uh, uh, he's waiting for a crew station, whatever, and um, he shits himself. Uh, as you do. <laughs> and so he goes, oh, my train's in five minutes, I need- So he runs across to Millet's and goes, quick, Levi's, 36. The bloke just puts it in a bag, he runs onto the train, uh, he goes into the, the toilet, takes his, uh, um, trousers and pants off. His soiled trousers yes. and pants. Yes. Throws them out of the window, I won't be needing those again. Cleans himself off, open the bags, it's a jacket! Oh. No, he didn't have a call! At what point did he go into it and go, go, quick, Levi's 36, and the bloke went, sorry, Levi's 36, what, a pair, no, 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 shall I wrap them, them, it, it, shall I wrap, <laughs> just wrap, whatever it is, do you want to look, no, do, I'm not looking when you're putting it in the bag, please, right, <laughs> uh, well, 36 <laughs> waist joints, well, no, don't say anything, I've told you 36 Levi's, <laughs> yes. put it in a bag yeah. and charge me for it, yeah, I don't oh. want to discuss it further, yeah. There was one, um... Here we go. There was one about a woman whose yep. husband died, and she had him cremated, yep. and made, uh, made like a little egg timer out of him, mm. and she said, I did that, so it can still help around the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might be true. That might be a joke. <laughs> That's quite sweet. That no, might be that true. That is a true story, again. It was all No, right. not again, because the ones I just told weren't. Nor is the boiling the brains in a bag, curry, microwave. Head story, true. Yeah. They're too, they're too convenient. Will they... you be buried or cremated? What? Will you be buried or cremated? I don't know. Uh, by, uh, cremated. I what do you say? I've, I don't know. It's out of my hands. Yeah, I haven't thought I've about it. I've not thought it through and no, uh, I don't honest. care either way. Have you heard the one so about- we've li Sorry. I'm just worried that we're getting into a macabre world now of- Ashes, boiled heads. So I think we should play some music. Let people just calm down. Levi's. Just think about some of the, the urban myths they've maybe heard. Assess yeah. them. Maybe they are absolute bollocks. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, they can move on from it. Well, it's just that the death thing, right? Yeah. 
there was an argument on there about, huh? do you know that Twilight Zone or whatever it was, Tales of the Unexpected? Oh, yeah. Where the woman got buried alive. Mm. Yeah. They were saying how, like, years ago, um, they bury people thinking they're dead. Yeah. And they've, they've recently, like, dug coffins up, and then the people who were in the coffin weren't dead, they might have just been, like, in some sort of deep sleep or Catonic. whatever. And they've, they've lifted the lid off. Yeah. And there's scratch marks yeah. on the thing. Yeah. And that's pretty scary. That Makes you think. I mean, I hope they check these days. <laughs> that's yeah. all. Um, I'd like to play a beautiful song now by Cat Stevens called <clears throat> Lily White. It's, it, it's lovely. A song for the lovers, room? Yeah. The big sell. <laughs> Please. Cooper Temple clause there, who needs enemies on XFM 104.9. Well, it's competition time. Um, if you want that celebrity, celebrity endorsed bag from the BAFTAs, um, Jane has a good idea. Go on. She thinks we should re revive sort of swap shop because a I competition. Love swap shop. I think it's a great game. It's great. It was great, right? But a competition or just saying why you need it, right? This way, um, uh, you know, it's how much you can give, and I think it should be right. What will endorse Carl's life? A theme of the last, the season, I suppose. This is that we're ending a season now of this yeah. of this show, aren't we? And one of the big themes is is really develop Carl, enhance yeah. Carl, rejuvenate him in yeah. some way. What do you think Carl would want? Have you got something he'd love? It can be battling tops, you know, and you've got to say why he'd love your old battling tops. It can be a book. Sorry, what's a what's a battling top? Was this something you used to take to school, like with your hoop and stick? <laughs> no, it was a little and your game. Baked potato. It was in the wrist action. And Go on. You'd, you'd, it was like little tops, right? You'd have four players, right? You'd spit, wind it around with cotton, right? And hold a little. Um, I'm getting excited thinking about I it. I don't know what you're talking about. No, I know. I'm getting overexcited. It was just battling. Was tops. this something like? And you pull it, yeah, yeah and one. it goes mad. Don't yeah. send one of them. I've had one. <laughs> I'm gonna, don't give any clues. It could be some educational. It could be some personal to you that you think you might enhance. So the competition is. Um, Basically, if you want that bag, so let's just explain what the bag is. It's these, one of these sort of cardboard giveaway bags that we got at the Baftas. It's got a nice big picture of the Bafta logo. We got it signed by uh, Graham Norton, Angus Dayton, Alan Davis, Jamie Theakston, Paul Whitehouse, Helen Baxendale, Steve, Phil Mitchell, McFadden, um, Simon Pegg, Steve Wright, obviously the three of us. And uh, you know, this is a nice little sort of you know, if you like kind of autographs, or if you're an autograph hunter or whatever else, or you just like the bag, or you like the show, you know, or you then want um, a little piece of Carl, little, or you want to give Carl something, a, a bit of yourself, or exactly. to enhance his life. So let's really. get it straight. So it's something that you have. It doesn't have to be very expensive. It doesn't have to no. be necessarily a worthy thing. It could, could I be mean, something you've made. Carl, but, Carl has to go. I want that. Something that enhances Carl's life in some way. Something that will make his life a little bit more uh, special, a little bit better. Yeah. And this is a write or email only. We don't want your phone calls on this because we're just too so lazy. So what, what could make Carl's life a little bit more special? And we'll give it away next week. So you've got a week to, to email or write in with your suggestions about what it is that you'd want to swap for this uh, this celebrity bank. Is it carl at xfm.co.uk? Yeah. Uh, or, or you can write xfm PO Box 1049 London WC2 H7 XX. Yeah. Uh, give, a, give them out again, Rick. Sorry, we ought, you ought to make, maybe mention something like, you know, uh, Gervais bag. Oh, I, th I think, I think, um, uh, Carl Swap Shop. Carl Swap Shop. Or, uh... Oh. Well, let's not confuse it. Well, it's just good to have a good name. <laughs> okay. What are you thinking? It's just gonna take as long as the Is this thinking on radio comes. again? Is this thinking on radio again? Alright, alright, we'll just do so, that. So, hang on, it can't just be Carl at XFM. Is it not Carl dot Pilkington? Yeah, with a K. But the thing is, why are they emailing me? Because I'm not taking any bribes. They've got to send the stuff in. No, 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 they, no they haven't. But a hundred people send something and you send ninety nine back. No, all of a sudden, oh yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> they just email or <laughs> write in that suggestion. Oh. Make sure that you mention who you are if you're emailing and leave a telephone number as well. We need a telephone number. We got to call you back. Let me give you an example. I like the bag. I want the bag, right? I think this would enhance Carl's life because I am sending uh, a, a feng shui book. Something like that. You yeah. know what I mean? I am sending Carl a teddy bear. You have to explain why, though. Obviously, yeah. we can't. Why you think it isn't, you know. This is getting be, so much more complicated than it needs to. Oh, I'm bored with it. It I was know. such an easy idea. Before. Throw the bag. Well, burn the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Give burn the addresses again, the Rick. bag. Okay. It's XFM PO Box 1049. That's easy to remember. London WC2H7XX. And the email? I can't remember. Carl dot Pilkington at XFM dot co dot UK with a K. With a K. All right, well done. Yeah. Man so alive, that was exhausting. Any I'll tell you clues, what, Carl? What would you like? What would you like? I with? really don't know. 
Oh, no. I honest to God, I can't- I can't help anyone out here. No. Um, you just see something you like when you see it? Well, there might be something out there that I don't know about, and yet it is- <laughs> I'm sure there is. <laughs> you know I'm I mean? sure there's something out there you don't know there's about. There's things in this room you don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> no, but- Okay, look, um, <laughs> we played it before once, and I know you were a child. Yeah, I love I'm this. a big fan of this. This is from this. Amy Mann's album, Bachelor Number 2, and this is Red Vines, baby. Beautiful. I do. I know Carl's not impressed as ever. I don't know what your criteria for music appreciation is at all, Carl. It's just like you build them up as being something really good, and then I hear it, and it's like. Oh, but I don't know what it is that you're expecting to hear. That what we meant to say. Really good. What we meant to say. Oh, this is all media This is all right. Listen, when, you play, when you played Simon and Garth Uncle, yeah, right, they've got their own unique sound. You know yeah. it's them when they sing. Yeah, that could have been loads of women who I know. <laughs> It could have been loads of women who you know. <laughs> you only know your girlfriend. <coughs> what I mean, Cheryl Crow sounded like Cheryl Crow to me. Yeah, but well, only superficially. But yeah. man's been a lot around longer than Crow. Who knows what you know influences she may have had? That sounds like a fable, doesn't it? Man's been around longer than Crow. Hey, <laughs> 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 eh? but you see, no, I mean that's just you know, there's a number. Let's, let's be honest. Really, I mean, there's not that many great female artists, are there? Oh, hey, be careful there, Steve. Some of the, uh, the sisters out there will be disagreeing with I'm you. I'm not saying that they can't sing a beautiful song. I'm just worried they can't write the material. I'm thinking, they're... I'm thinking of Bush. I'm thinking <laughs> of... Aren't we all, Rick? Aren't I'm all? thinking of arm trading. <laughs> That's true enough. I am thinking <laughs> of... Anastasia. Anastasia. I know Anastasia. you love Anastasia, don't you? you I love that new one. I, I love that new one. I, I mean, I don't it like that sort like of stuff. the other two. But it's sort of, there's a good chorus, and I can, <laughs> I, I can do a dance. That dance at the end when she puts her arms up. I like she that one. She does sound like, she's a cover of yeah. the new Tina Turner. Yeah, no, I haven't like, seen her liked, yeah. And, <laughs> and <laughs> with, uh, me and Steve think that she's sort of like one of those people that go out with her daughter. Well, I think the reason is because, if you notice, she always wears sunglasses. Yeah. And I'm sure that she's, because she claims to be something like 28, I bet she's like 40. It's like one of those 40 year old women. Women who come from Essex, but they come with a, a, their daughter's twenty-first, and they're going, "Your mum's mad." Yeah, they think we're sisters. They're not, you know. I'm forty, and yeah. she's. She, she always years. flirts with her daughter's boyfriend. Yeah, where are you going? We're going down. Uh, yeah. We're going down millionaires. Your mum's mad. Myself. Your mum's got a bra on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't you think she looks like that, Carl? Yeah, I can't picture her. You can't picture Anastasia. No, she wears glasses, sunglasses all the time. Yeah. Mm. No, You're not into this, are you, Carl? You've get this this whole sort of broadcast thing as just you're fed up with it, aren't you? You can't wait to finish next week. Well, it just seems I can't say anything right. Why? Well, whatever I say isn't right or funny. No, but do you know what I mean? What? Because uh, we we what, what what are you upset about? Well, I laughed at the urban myth, but not being true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and but what one of the things I tell you, if if you take nothing else away from our time on the radio, it should be to be more inquisitive. When a piece of information comes to you, don't just take it at face value, query and question it. That yeah. is what ma has made Ricky Gervais one of the premier thinkers in this country. Mm -hmm. He will not accept anything on face value, he queries everything. Anastasia, she looks glamorous and twenty- wait a minute, those glasses, what do they suggest? Actually she's forty, I'm not gonna buy her records. And that's, like and, that. and that's, and that's libelous. That's potentially so libelous. <laughs> <laughs> so, you see? So, so, hang on a minute, Roy what? Orbison then, was he starting to look old? <laughs> We're yes. not saying everyone who wears sunglasses uh, is necessarily older than their years. No, we're not even saying about Anastasia, we're just doing about an image, one of those sort of like ravers that goes to their daughter. It was just, it was a lot, it was a little bit of light observational comedy to be honest, Carl. You've seen through it, mate. Yeah. You tore it to shreds. She's not 40. You know what I mean? She doesn't hang out round with much younger people, chatting at their boyfriends. It wasn't true. Mm -hmm. What are you, what do you want? What do you want in life, Carl? Tell me now, because uh, we me and Steve can probably sort it out. <laughs> <laughs> that is true enough. <laughs> Come on. What do you want? What would you, what, what's the best thing what would you would make your If you could play any song now, what would it be? Well, we're going to be uh, spinning one of my favourites later on. Killing a Georgie. Killing a Georgie. We've sorted that out. You've probably got a lovely f few gifts you can choose from, just f just because we got a few signatures on a piece of paper. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What what more do you want out of life? I always find that. Do you want a cat? You want a cat, don't you? It's the things that you don't think you're going to get that you enjoy the most. Right? Go on, like right. what? No, well, like when you go out for a night and you're expecting just to have a simple little drink and it turns out to be a really nice night. You see people you haven't seen for ages. Yeah. Now the Baftas, <laughs> so sort of you expect so much. He's that, having a go, isn't he? That when you get there, you get that little bit of veg as a starter, <laughs> and you think, look at it. They've tried to make it look good. 
but really, as I said to you, I mean, you, you don't eat veg, which no. I find is mental. Um, <laughs> but like the starter that we had, that was like, how would you describe that? that it was a of... veg pie. It was like I thought from the from the I was starving when I came in there, right? And from the uh, um, stairs, I could see the tables, and it looked like there was pate laid out, and I was getting excited. I was salivating. Got there, it was a vegetable pie. I said, I said to Steve, <laughs> so I, vegetable pie. Okay, I someone took mine. It was away. A White House took mine, didn't he? Yeah, but Rick, you won't eat anything. We've discussed this before. All you'll eat is pizza and crisps. Oh, Do you know what he said to me in the week? I was picking up my food in the BBC canteen, and he went, right. Uh, well, I'm honestly thinking of stopping having lunch with you. I went, what? He went, it winds me up. I went, what? He said, he said, it winds me up. It winds me up. You won't eat anything. Mm. That's a lovely bit of chicken there. You're not eating that. You're not eating that. It winds me up too much. Like, you get irritated by people, noise. He said, you eating, uh, it just winds me up, Gervais. And then he went, you're a cock. Yeah. <laughs> it really annoyed me. His eating habits drive me mad mm. because he's constantly whinging about the fact that he thinks he's got cancer. Every <laughs> 25 <laughs> seconds. Wait a minute, I got, I can feel a lump, I can feel a lump. <laughs> it's your cock. No, it's, it's not, it wasn't there before, it wasn't there, it's a lump, it's a lump. I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying, quick to the hospital. I have been, how many times have you been to, um, like a doctor's clinic and sat in the waiting room, right? Carl, how many times have you been there, right, with a friend of yours? <laughs> Twice I've been with Ricky. One time when we were writing the first years of the office, we were writing in the, uh, <coughs> in the waiting room for the doctor. Because <coughs> he had to go in there and have his, because he thought he had testicular cancer. <laughs> I swear to God, <laughs> I'd seen he like it. Like it. And I just said, so I, and he's in the output. Right, I never worry about that again. He said, no, you're not in the risk group now. The other time was. But wait um, a minute, you had to the, go other in time, there. the other time was, I thought I had, um, uh, um, a stomach cancer. And I went, she went, why? I said, oh, God. That was, she said, he said, when you get a sore throat, do you think you've got throat cancer? I said, I've, I have thought that, yeah. And she sort of like, she sort of said, get out of here, you idiot. And I, that's what I like. I like that when they do that. But I think it's, it's sort of since my mum died of it. And I just think, oh, God, it's in the family. And that's, that's the thing yeah, I worry about, but yeah. But don't you prefer, I mean, I don't go because it scares me. <laughs> I yeah, prefer, I'm like that. I prefer not to go because he might, I always worry that, especially with cancer and things, that they'll go, you know, I'll go there with a sore leg or something, and they'll go, no, your leg's fine, but look at this we've found in your head. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a brain, you'll be laughing! No, but do you know what I mean? They'll, oh. find, they'll find something, because none yeah. of us are perfect, and as you get older, yeah. you yeah. get little moles and stuff, and, yeah. they, and they'll say, oh, we best get rid of that, and it's like, leave it alone, it's not causing any problems. <laughs> <laughs> that shouldn't be there. <laughs> Leave it alone. It's not good. It is. It's getting bigger and it's strangling your lungs. But Rick sort of like. Oh. It's, but my point was th this is what upsets me. He constantly worries about his health. He's constantly obsessed. I found some buboes. I think I've got plague. <laughs> every single. I mean, every ten minutes he's got something. <laughs> I started choking once because so I found yeah. some dust. Didn't yeah, I? Yeah, he swallowed some dust. He started choking like he swallowed a fish bone. Right. <laughs> he was literally. It, I thought he was going to die. <laughs> and he from panicked dust. and he shouted. Right. I'm choking. I'm going blue and I'm trying to hit me and he's hitting me on the back and he shouted. I don't know the Heimlich maneuver. Yeah. And I was choking and dying, but then I wanted to laugh because he panicked, going, it, it, "It's like it, if he's going to die, I want him to know that I didn't know yeah. the Heimlich maneuver." I did everything I, I did everything I could, but I didn't know the Heimlich <laughs> maneuver, so that was why I couldn't have saved <laughs> oh, him. But my point is this: he worries about his health, and yeah. yet he eats like a child. Mm. He eats crisps <laughs> constantly, Coke. He keeps going. Oh, I've got a headache. I've got a headache. Drink some water. Yeah. No, no, boring. Hate it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I did say that, yeah. Chips, pizza, sausages. Sausages, beans and chips. I have never seen someone eat so much. <laughs> Sausage. I don't know how he's not bored of it yet. <laughs> Sausage, chips and beans. Everything that's got to have cheese on it. Parmesan cheese, please. Uh, it, you know, on anything. Uh, why don't they leave it in a restaurant as well? Seriously, why don't they leave the Parmesan cheese? It's like it's gold dust or something. They salt, have as much salt as you want. But they, they come along. And I, I found myself sneaking. I've said to Jane, look out, is the way you're looking. And I've leant over and did some more Parmesan. I feel really guilty. Just leave it. It was what? on a trifle. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need cheese on dessert. I've explained it to you. <laughs> oh dear. It's oh. So this is what this is why I get angry. And that is why I got. And this is I tell you this. What if I had to be? On, I mean, Ricky was on room one hundred and one. If I had to be on there, I'll tell you this. Ricky Gervais would be the first person in there. <laughs> He'd be straight in there, man, because I got a list as, what, as long as you. What did you think when I said um, annoying people like making noises? Unbelievable. So you talked about yeah, annoying noises and that people that make annoying noises that are annoying. He is the most irritating man I've ever met. And I swear to God, I don't mean that as an insult. You no. really are because you go out of your way to be insulting and irritating. Thanks. Well, that's fine, you know. But you'd be straight in there. Yeah. In fact, we should do this next week for Carl. We should uh, we should draw up a list of Carl's hates. What he put in room one hundred and one. Oh, that think is think about that next that week. That is genius. Next week, so we got the competition. We got Carl. When I tell you what, let's play a record and do White Van Carl. Yeah, and sum up and just let's slam dunk this mother. <laughs> That's <laughs> true enough. What are you gonna play? Some oh. behind stars. Okay. Uh, 
Alpine Stars, Carbon Kid, featuring uh, little Brian from Placebo. Oh yeah, thought I recognised him. Ooh. Yeah, so like that. Right, White Van Carl, Carl, <laughs> Carl, it's you, White Van Carl. Yeah, this is where we steal the uh, White Van Man column from the Sun and basically uh, fire those questions at Carl, uh, getting his uh, opinions on the week's news. Okay, Carl. Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, what do you make of this? The average woman, apparently, takes 27 minutes to get ready to go out. Did you know that? Is it... <laughs> are they saying that's that's a good thing, or...? No, they're saying that the bare minimum... It no, takes, no, average, this is what surely. Saying. No, no, no. But I remember reading, I'm sure they said that um, it takes them 27 minutes to get ready to go out, at the very least, I, I think. Mean, it's, it's not that bad if it's for a night out. It's... That, I mean, 30 minutes is all right. If it's but, going to get to 20 woodbines. But, <laughs> yeah, or, you know, if the house is on fire and it's, like, quick, <laughs> yeah, get ready I, and get out. I, I, don't, I don't think it's in a, in a, a fire, no. I, I think, yeah, go on. I think twi- that's, that's 27 minutes. I'll take about 27 minutes. I, take I, 27 I minutes. can take up to that. But they, they, do they include the getting up and having a bath? Doesn't that? give me any more details. No. 27 well, minutes. Well, it's difficult to go by. It's difficult to go on that one, isn't it? How long does Suzanne take to go out of the house? Depends. Like I say, if, we, if we're just nipping out shopping, uh the old flip-flops and trackies on. Yeah. But if you're going out for the night, it takes a bit longer, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you've got wire in the flip the uh, trackies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, um, okay, no, really don't know what the ins and outs of this story are. Is Van Goren Eriksson sticking with Nancy rather than Ulrika? Well, it's his wife and that was his girlfriend. Yeah, I don't know, if the if story's true. No one seems to have offered any evidence for it. Anyway, maybe Everyone like, remained uh, silent. It's rubbish. And, uh, okay, what do you make of this? David Beckham apparently was driving despite having an injured foot. And uh, just further threatening his World Cup chances. Now, obviously, you're a big football fan. Well, I'm, I'm not that big. I like I like the odd game. Sure. Uh, Would that hurt him? Would that hurt his foot? It can't be good. Is it in a plaster? It's not well, it's, a big car. It's, it's it? better to drive than it is to walk on it. <laughs> good point. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Of course. Can't argue can't with can't that. Can't get the bus, can he? Okay. And what do you make of this uh, fascist leader who's having a lot of success in the French presidential elections? What's he doing? <laughs> have you not have you not come across this story? No. Right. This is one of the big big political so, stories. He's got a far right that got nearly twenty percent. He's a far-right fascist leader and he's uh, having uh, considerable success in the French elections. I don't think we should be asking hard questions like this. Not so you've got to I, I, I'm getting scared. There's all sorts of bad stuff going on in the world that we don't know about. You know yeah. I mean? But we know about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're better off not knowing because there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> you're absolutely right, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't argue with that. Oh, oh God, man, that's alive. fantastic! That is brilliant. Have we got? Have we got it lined up? Yeah. Bit of it's the one song I've been wanting to play since we've been on XFM, really, and yeah. uh, it took me a while to track it down. Obviously, in the XFM library, but here it is. Give me shelter from the Rolling Stones. It's an amazing track. Give me shelter from the Rolling Stones. That's Surely, the if there was a soundtrack to the uh, Vietnam War, that would be on there, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, can I just reiterate this uh, this giveaway? Then we got this bag signed by a number of celebrities: Graham Norton, Angus State, and different people on there. Yeah. And if you want to win that, then you have to uh, email or write in with what what you are willing to swap. Okay, so you need to swap something and something that's, which will enhance Carl's life. It can be it. anything. You could have made it. You could have bought it. Uh, anything. You, you, but you have to have it. You can send it to us in exchange for this. Uh, this signed bag, and you can email Carl, carl.pilkington, Carl with a K, carl.pilkington at xfm.co.uk, or you can write to, uh, The Bag, or, uh, Ricky Gervais's Big I've just realised why I've been saying, um, Carl with a K, because you can have Carl with a C, can't you? Yes, you can. As in, Cox. Absolutely. Uh, or you can write to, uh, xfm, P.O. Box 104.9, uh, 104.9, 104.9, London, WC2, H7, double X. All right. Okay. Right. Well, right. there's going to be a bit of a change, isn't there? Um, yes, that's absolutely right, Rick. Normally we, we would end the show, obviously, with just a, a song for the, le- the ladies. But because it's sort of Carl's penultimate show, and uh, we're going to play one of his favourite tracks, what are you going to... Yeah, gonna I just of? thought we could play this. Uh, it is obviously the uh, the Killing of Georgie. By Rod Stewart. By Rod Stewart. And this yeah. is... Uh, a Come through on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, etc. Got some uh, great tunes actually lined up. Excellent. I've brought in uh, some Amy Mann, some... Uh, uh, Neil Young. I'm playing my favourite Clash track. What, are you, what have you got for us, Steve? I got a dynamite uh, hip hop tune by yeah. The Roots, which I think you enjoy. Love it, um, love got it. a little bit of uh, Joni Mitchell. Maybe swing that on later. Oh, and, excellent! Um, I nearly bought in some Joni Mitchell. It's a good job I didn't. Yeah, exactly. Well, it wouldn't make any difference. It wouldn't have made any difference. No, we, 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 we would have played, probably played yeah. yours, and then yeah. I'd have been Fine. told to. 
go away. Uh, Carl, what have you got lined up for us as the producer? <laughs> right, well, uh, uh, Rockbusters. Been off this week again. Has he? Yeah. Another had, week off? Another week off, yeah. 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 No, I didn't have a full week off. I had three days off yeah. because I was working all over Christmas. Yeah. And, uh, still didn't stop working, preparing stuff. <laughs> You've got a nice load of prizes there that yeah, I've sorted out. I had to come in especially to sort that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Rockbusters. Did you rifle continue. through the drawers up at Capital Gold instead of Daily? Yeah. 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 Uh, Rockbusters was still doing that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, that. Yeah, you're bigging it up. Yeah. He's bigging <laughs> it up. Yeah. Still doing that. We've yeah. got that. Uh, last week, um, we sort of changed educating Ricky a bit. Um, just a little don't bit. say we. I don't want to be incriminated in it. Well, yeah. well, changed it in a sense that rather than giving you too much information about different things, it's hard to sort of keep it all in. Yeah. I'm giving you sort of information on one thing. So yeah. last, last no, week. No, because some of your stuff was a little bit too intense. We done. Uh, my favourite story was there was a blind girl. She hit her head and got better, and I couldn't take all that in at once. <laughs> yeah. So you should really ration well, some we, of the we education. Sort of, we sort of started Wasn't last week um, war related uh, stories. Yeah, it was uh, war. Do you think of that then? What and do you it think was of that then? three sure. things. And it was the French um, battle. Uh, going over the top was John's got a moustache, <laughs> which you think was ambiguous because someone might have said that anyway. Well, look, you've remembered it, so it's working. So yeah. we'll be doing that. And, and last week, loads you of said French people have just gone to war. Who were well, listening to this? Yeah. You uh, you said you wanted to learn some science this week. Did so, I? Yeah. <laughs> so so the title this week for that is Acid. I would sort you some science out. <laughs> Acid. Acid, How long did that take you to call? Listen, it? Well, you know, um, look, people people love Carl. There's comedians coming to me and go, Carl's the funniest man. They, they absolutely yeah. love him, right? But I think we're only seeing half of it, right? Mm. Uh, if we can get him on television, his face then, when he's told me that title, was like a child at Christmas. Yeah. It was, it was. He was so proud of it, yeah. he was excited what I was gonna- it was brilliant. It's a bit like when a child's drawn a picture in art class, you've- you know you've got to stick it on the fridge, you've got but to, you basically yeah. think it's crap. Yeah. Yeah. It's very much like that. Alright, right, Carl? Is that good? Yes. So, we'll be doing that. Do we need them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, have you got another one? We have got another one. Looking at, uh, Snails. This oh, week. Do yeah. We need snails. Do okay, we need snails? Because I know you're not a fan of snails, are you? Well, after a bit of research, I found some good stuff out about, um, like, they sleep for 13 years, some of them. Yeah. And that. So we'll be looking <laughs> Rick, into that you later. you tried that one. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. We've got Ritual. <laughs> ritual. Yeah. Yeah. Which is something that I told last, you about. Yeah, well, last week's was brilliant. What it's was good it? to have a flat head in India. <laughs> it's good to have a flat head in India. That's I brilliant. All that. Yeah. Um, well, I'm gonna, uh, uh, I'm gonna just play one of my favourite Smith tracks. Can I just uh, make a request? I'd quite like if, you know, if we've got time to bring back, um, just for one week only, White Van Carl. Sure. Because there's some quite interesting topics this week. Oh, is there things happening in the world? There's some things happening. There is. <laughs> there is a light that never goes out. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Someone's left one of those little things in here. It's brilliant, isn't it's it? It's amazing. What are they called, those things? <laughs> I just I imagine that just then I was thinking of being in the front row at a Morrissey concert and going, oh, oh, just, can I just play along? <laughs> <laughs> they are brilliant. I uh, don't know what kind of sound that is. I don't know. I, it's <laughs> only used for when Kenneth Williams <laughs> yeah, exactly. sees someone undressing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the only time that yeah. is used, that noise. <laughs> exactly. That is brilliant. But it's like it was specially created for the Carry On films. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we need- I don't know what it is, but we need something when I walk in and see someone changing. Well, what about this? <laughs> there is a light that never goes out by the Smiths. Um, I phoned, uh, Carl up in the week, yeah, and, uh, I said, uh, what are you doing? He went, well, even though it's one of my days off, I'm just doing some research on the web. Went, found anything and said, yeah, I'm doing science. And then he said, you can get wigs for dogs in Tokyo. <laughs> That's his scientific fact. Yeah. And I went, what do you mean? You, you, dogs, if they need a wig. I said, if they need a wig, what, dogs going bald? <laughs> and he went, like, this is fine to him, he went, it's a stressful city, Tokyo. <laughs> the world's all right with Carl. He's always got an explanation. <laughs> I've only ever seen him confused once. When, in Edinburgh, he looked out of his window one day and he saw a bloke put in a parking ticket on some rubbish. Yeah. And that genuinely confused him. Yeah. He couldn't work out, could you? It's a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> but, 
<laughs> and the ba- and the woman breastfeeding her eight year old child didn't you didn't like did you? I don't like that. But um, the what's the name? Animals with wigs. I kind of thought after I put the phone down to you, kind of <laughs> thought about it. Thought, yeah, it's a bit daft that. Are you sure it's not the, the aging pop group? No, the but, animals. But when you think, have you ever seen like a bald pet? No. The, the, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Because my mum, we had a ca- we used to get through loads of cats because we lived there. <laughs> Today, isn't it? What do you mean? It's only two past one. What are you doing? Running a restaurant? Oh God, what do you mean? No, we lived on like a main road. Oh yeah. Right? So yeah. we used to get through a lot of them. It was their saying, risk. You know, stop wasting money, you know, it's, it's not Stop good. wasting money, not wasting yeah. cats. Right, so um, anyway, we had this cat that was ill all the time. Mm. And, uh, it's just bag of noobs, probably. <laughs> yeah, Melingra. <laughs> yeah, I'm terrified. I'm going to witch house. Wrong. Oh God, bloody hell. Wrong. Don't, so, don't let me go to the Pilkington. <laughs> <laughs> and it, 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 for some reason, it kept being sick all the time. Right? Yeah, <laughs> that is noobs. Nice. That's definitely noobs. Nice. So my mum thought, kind of thought, oh, I've had enough of this, and she yeah. shaved it. What? Whoa! 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 <laughs> whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, I know, I know you're not vets in your family, but what correlation did your mum think there was between you being sick and shaving it? Because it kept being sick and it was a pain to wash because it kept getting So she up. wanted a dry wipe cat. So. <laughs> Why didn't you just varnish it? <laughs> <laughs> what? It's weird, it's but, weird so, so, now, so now he's cold and sick. No, but do you, no, not, I mean, not all of it, she left sort of the back half, but sort of from, from its waist, sort of- I it, love that! Shaving because it's sick on itself! Yeah. And, that uh, is it's, genius. it was the weirdest looking thing. I mean, no, normally I like cats, I'm always like giving yours a stroke on the head and that. Yeah. But as soon as she did that, it was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> can't thing. touch it. And then- So now it's sick, cold, and hated. Yeah. I love, I, I, Carl. It must have, I mean, other, the other cats must have been taking the mick out of it constantly. It's just making things worse. Did it get, I'm hoping that it got run over and was put out of its misery. No, I think it, I think it got alright, that one. Or is that the, <laughs> yeah, it did get run over. <laughs> <laughs> did, it, ah! Oh, <laughs> God. Oh. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> How many cats do you say you've got through? I'd say when I, whilst I was living at home, I mean, it's, it's still on the increase even though I'm not there. <laughs> so, uh, whilst, whilst I was there, probably five. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah. And were you upset each time or you just got used to it? It's, it's one of them things, isn't it? Like I've said before, when you first see something, it's a bit of a shock. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's like the elephant man or whatever. Yeah. First time you see him, it's that sort of, oh, look at that. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you saw Steve? No, I'm not being funny. Do you remember the, f- the, f- the first? Yeah, but I've said this before, it's always, then you get used to how people look and you don't- <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm gonna burst. I'm gonna, you have to play a record. No, but- Cause I just <laughs> see his face. <laughs> no, but I've got used to it. Shut up. Shut up. Let you down. Gold Rush on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais. Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Brilliant. Rick, so I was in, uh, uh, I don't know whether I should tell you this because it might rock you to the very core. Go on. But I was in an Indian restaurant the other night and, uh, I don't, you've not seen the film, have you seen the film Notting Hill? I haven't, no. Right, in the film Notting Hill, have you seen that, Carl? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Do you remember the bit, uh, Julia Roberts plays uh, a movie star, rather like She's Julia the Roberts. most famous, yeah. Movie, yeah I know and she's her. in a restaurant having dinner with, uh, uh, Hugh Grant and she overhears some people in the restaurant slagging her off and saying, oh, you yeah. know, she's a slapper, probably all actors are, all actresses are. And uh, she's sort of stewing on it, and uh, Hugh Grant wants to say something, and she says, "No, I won't. I won't let you." And and then as she's walking out, she goes and says something to them, and of course their faces drop. They can't believe it's her. Anyway, I was in uh, in an uh, Indian restaurant the other night, and they were slagging you off, Rick. Um. Well, they were what they were saying is they were going, "Oh, Ricky Jones. The thing about Ricky Jones is he's just like the character he plays. Right. He's just like David Brent in real life." And I was listening in, and I was thinking, "Well, I want to say something. I want to go over and have a word and say, you know, you're you're partially right, <laughs> but uh, but I couldn't." I didn't know what to do. I didn't know. I didn't know what to say. I, I couldn't. 
What can I do? I couldn't really go over there and get into a rumble. I want to say, what do you mean that I'm yeah. like him? I, I use his face and his vocal cords, mm. but I mean, I, I can't help that. Uh, but it's that thing as well of, I don't know where they've got this information from. But, uh, no, 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 no. Because no, you're no, not, it's, so it's they're wrong. Well, so it's, 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 yeah, they've received it from somewhere, or they've, they've read it, or something. It's, it's just, I, I, but I don't know, I mean, I can't really be annoyed that they're just wrong. But it it's, was very it's, weird. It's like, it, it's like being annoyed at a vicar believing in God. I can't get annoyed with him. Mm. I just don't believe. But because obviously they didn't recognise me, it's rather like you know when they talk about that idea that if you could go to your funeral, what would people yeah. be saying about you? It's yeah. the closest that you could get to that. Really? You, you you can hear what people are saying about your friends. But why don't you um to get, get him around to the you go? He is. Yeah. What do you think of the other fella? That sometimes <laughs> with him. <laughs> yeah. That tall fella. He's good, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. It's, it's a shame actually because um. On the occasions I do get recognised from minor appearances, um, I never get any cool fans. I just get the nerds. I get the real nerdlingers. I don't get, you know, <laughs> beautiful women coming out. You're putting out. them off though. Putting them off. You've got to take what you can. Well. They're, but you'll have nothing. No, I know, but this girl came up the other day and she said to hey, are you that guy who's involved with the office? I went, oh, yes I am. She went, my boyfriend loves you, he's over here. And she pointed him out. I was oh. devastated. I thought, I'm in here. Yeah. There was nothing. There was nothing going on. But there was a guy who was in HMV and he was working with the tea. He'd been working with the tea and he saw me. He said, uh, would you sign this DVD? I went, oh, no problem. He, I said, and I was trying to make conversation. I was trying to be frothy. And I said to him, oh, selling well, is it? And he yeah. went, it is, it is. Although we've had quite a lot of returns. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, don't tell me that. I don't what, know that. What did he mean? That they didn't like and it? I said, I said, said, what? You, people have been bringing no, it back. No, I think it's he went, glitches. He, went, oh, he said, they've been bringing it back. I said, what was the problem? He said, they didn't really like it. No! Yeah, they, some of them didn't really like it. You can give it back if you don't like yeah, it. No, I mean, I don't know whether they gave him the money back, but certainly that's what he dealt with. That's what he'd encountered. And then I he mean, said, we didn't give the money back, they just wanted to drop it off. What, they didn't even <laughs> want the money yeah, back? Yeah, they just wanted to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they didn't, <laughs> just didn't want it in the house. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I don't want this rubbish in the <laughs> house. Oh, but we still get the money for it, do we? We still get the money. But do you know that I told you that other time? Again, because I'm, pe people don't recognise me, again I was in a record shop, there was a stack of office videos, and this guy went by, and I sort of heard them as they went by, he went, oh, office, yeah, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people like that. I think it's shit, he's made when I agree. Really? And, uh, and of course, again, I was not. What could I do? I couldn't say anything. I couldn't pipe up and go. Well, that's sort of. Well, I, a bit I, of like, yeah, I like these. The fact that you're always hearing these loud vocals. Yeah. It's, uh, well, yeah <laughs> it's great. Guys, What's the chance of that? Too <laughs> that's brilliant. Maybe well, that, maybe it, everyone's always slagging it off. But it's partly, that's it. Yeah, that's partly it, but also <laughs> because I keep stand, hanging out by stacks of office <laughs> DVDs. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Wearing a t-shirt with a picture of you and me on. <laughs> yeah, that'd do it. What we got to play, Carl? Something that Steve wants. Well actually, um, I must uh, dedicate this to uh, someone who's emailed in. I mentioned earlier that I was going to play some of the Roots, and Joe from Peterborough is very excited about that. So, uh, this is not from the current Roots album, sadly, which I've not fully absorbed yet, and therefore don't feel I can make a decision on which track to play, but maybe that'll come that's a, a sort of something in the future. and thought we put into our... You know, picking music. Exactly. I had these cassettes in my bag from last week. <laughs> sure. Anyway, this is from the album Things Fall Apart. It's the Roots featuring Erica Badu. You got me. Let's play it. It's going to be structured. Set pieces, um, hitting our marks. Do you know what I mean? There'll be time checks, uh, uh, weather checks, <laughs> Rick hold out. Um, if, you, if, you, if you're driving, careful on that. <laughs> so do the prizes. Watch check for traffic, like yeah. if it's bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well again, an arbitrary selection of uh, goodies. What are those politicians doing? <laughs> Was that XFM News? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, what have we got? So we've got, uh, for those that are a fan of the movie Donnie Darko, which a lot of people rave about this year, a sort of weird teenage movie, then uh, there's a sort of uh, sweatshirt there. It is actually quite nice. It's not bad at all. It's, uh, it's medium, so if, you, if you're a bit of a bloater, yeah. don't bother to apply unless you've got a friend or relative. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we've also got here, um, a Graham Norton video, Certificate 18. Oh, that's <laughs> so, that was... please don't phone up unless, or, t sorry, don't email in unless you're above the age of 18. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think, the best of his TV show. Yeah. Look forward to that. It's um, a big, stiff video, that, isn't it? It's a big, <laughs> stiff <laughs> cock of a video. <laughs> Thanks oh, very much. I meant you the... Can't say, yeah, yeah, you meant the bird. Yeah. Um, there's also a fairly mediocre British wartime thriller, Enigma, um, which a lot of people, it was hyped for a while, but it's actually interminable, I've seen it. <laughs> um, the, uh, first series here of The Kumars at number 42 on DVD, uh, I think that's award winning, so, uh, that's available as well. We've got two CDs by the look of it. We've got, uh, Pulp's Greatest Hits, which I don't think sold very well. 
and so presumably they are giving that away. <laughs> and Johnny Cash's um, current uh, album, uh, American for the Man Comes Around, there's some good cover versions there. Again, another big sell. A big yeah. sell. We're really pushing um, this. But it, it, yeah, it's a quite kooky. Uh, Johnny Cash here does covers of things including Personal Jesus. All oh, right. By Depeche Mode. Right, yeah. uh, we've got Bridge Over Troubled Water, his version of that. <laughs> Desperado. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, it's, it's not bad. That's probably the best treat in that bunch. And, right. Um, I'm assuming there's some questions there, Carl. Yeah, yeah. Right, here we uh, go. If you're a new listener, the way it works, I'll give you a cryptic clue and some wow. initials and it sort of makes up a band. Yeah. Um, makes more sense when you hear it, I reckon. Not particularly. Well, not really. Although so, people do get it. I yeah. just worry about the... The state of our listeners. Go on. <laughs> right, so there's three of them. You email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. It's email only. I email repeat, only. it is email only. We Can are have too that lazy <laughs> to answer the phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, right. here we go then. Number one. Um, there's, there's normally two easy ones and a difficult one. Sure. So here we go. Uh, number one. Don't argue with him. He ain't gonna change his mind. Don't argue with him. He ain't gonna change his mind. Yeah, that's AA. AA. That's, yeah. So Just that's the first one. He's not gonna change his mind. Um. What do you mean, um? You just, just, just got them written out, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I'm just thinking about what the answer is, so they don't write the answer down to Oh, for God. Don't <laughs> worry, they'll get it. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Well, um, what do you, yeah. well, you can't remember it? You came up with it. There's only three. I know, I know. It's weird, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's not weird. It's incompetent. <laughs> right, the second one, anyway. <laughs> I, I hope you get this. Um. <laughs> I hope you get this. <laughs> Yeah. And tell us the answer. This is a shambles, isn't Hang it? On a Come minute. on, keep going. Keep Go on. on. He always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. P. <laughs> and you don't know. You the don't answer. know that is. It'll, I'm sure it'll come to me once I see it on email. If, uh, what do you mean? Once they get it, you'll agree with them. I'll know if it's the one I had down as the answer. This is brilliant. Come Imagine on, Jeremy the... Paxman doing that. Going, yeah, University what, Times. Is that right? <laughs> Go on. Right, so uh, that's give that us, one. Give us that one again. Um, he always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. P. But you're confused. I don't understand how you can be confused. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what's the final one? The third one, uh, oh. I'll have to put that woman in the oven. And that's A, B. Alright, quickly give us them again. Right, so the first one, don't argue with him, he ain't, he ain't gonna change his mind. That's A, A. Um, he always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. That's P. And, um, I'll have to put that woman in the oven. A, B. All right. Okay. Ricky Doc Gervais at xfm.co.uk. I'm gonna play a classic track now by oh, uh, Neil Young, Alabama. Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Neil Young, Alabama. Uh, Carl is still confused. He's waiting. He's biting his fingers, waiting for an email to tell him the answer to the clue he made up but can't get. <laughs> I love that as an experiment. <laughs> as a psych- I mean, that would confuse psychologists that you come up with something that you can't get. It's brilliant. Yeah, you came up with the question. You don't know the answer. And you expect them to, but you can't and you made it up. Look at your face. I can feel- Play some adverts. Honestly, Juan by uh, Billy Corgan's new band there. Um, X Smashing Pumpkins. Mm -hmm. Sounds a bit like them, but yeah. I like it. It's alright, not bad. I like it. Yeah. I'm excited to know, Rick, incidentally, that someone's got the right answer. So uh, Carl really knows the answer, yeah. Brilliant. Well done, Carl. <laughs> You're a fool. Right. Well, um, talking of which, <laughs> it's a long time since we've had any white van Carl. For those that uh, don't remember this particular hot feature, um, <laughs> yeah. we basically ask Carl some of the questions that are asked of a white van driver in the sun. They always have this on Saturday afternoons. Anyway, here's the first one. Uh, they're not fascinating, Carl, but I'm just interested on your take, really. Yeah. What do you make of Scylla Black quitting Blind Date after her husband sent a message from beyond the grave? Are you familiar know, with this story? I didn't story? know that. What's, yeah. what's that? She went to see a medium and uh, supposedly her husband passed on information through the medium which was incredibly vague but um, persuaded her to quit live on air. Well, it's about, it's about time, isn't it? If even dead people are saying, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not enough. <laughs> ah! Oh, but I'll tell you what though, talking, about, talking about ghosts and that, do you know how I'm into them? Yeah. yeah. Right? How weird do you think this is, right? Well, it's not true. Before you say it, <laughs> play a record. No, go on, go on. Uh, <laughs> go on. Right, it's this woman. <clears throat> oh. I don't even know if it's ghost, really. It's just a bit weird. Sure. Yeah. 
Sure. And there's this woman, yeah. and she's, well, she's not a woman, she's a kid. Sure. <laughs> okay. She's, sure. She's walking down, like, a, a street in her area, it's a nice day and everything, everything's normal. Um, she's walking down, and a woman comes up, cycling past, right? The woman on the bike looks at the kid absolutely terrified, right? right. Got a really scary face on her. Yeah. The kid's thinking, why, why is she doing that? Yeah. Right? So anyway, she thinks nothing, nothing of it, goes, you know, I think she was playing in the park or whatever, goes and has a nice day. About fifteen years later- Oh, right, yeah. She's, I don't know, I think she was going to work, right, on a bike. She was riding her own bike. Riding okay. her own bike, cycling down the road. Oh, yeah. Looks at the kid. That's the thing that happened, like, 15, 20 years ago, right. it's her on the bike looking at her as a kid. Right. Not, not, not another child. No. So right. it's her, she's seen well, herself. Uh, what, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know where to start. Firstly, where does this information come from? But I mean, what, why do you ever con I mean, I don't know what part of that you think can be true. I, I don't- I, I, I'm honest, I'm- oh, I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. What are you talking about? <laughs> bit, bit weird though, isn't it? But it's not true. It didn't happen. Nothing happened like that. She said it did. Well, Who? she's wrong. Who? She said she saw herself. She saw herself as a kid, didn't she? Did she carry and on a, riding And her? as an adult when she was a kid. <laughs> did she stop and talk to herself or did she ride on by and think that's a bit weird, there's me as an eight-year-old. I won't stop, I'll be late for work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, if I'm late again the boss said he'd be in trouble. Yeah. Oh. Well, if, and where yeah. is this information? Was it, did it happen to someone you know? No. You overheard it on the bus? No, it was in, uh, it's in the 14 times. Ah, oh, right. Well, uh, okay. that's the answer. Good. We've okay. got to the bottom of that. Right, good. Um, <laughs> brilliant. Now, what do you make of David Blunkett accusing gangster rappers of making kids believe guns are cool? It's a hot topic there, Carl, and I imagine you've got some, uh, strong opinions. He's, he's saying what? He is saying, basically, that all this rap music is, uh, advocating gun use and violence against people, and he's very worried about it. Nah. Okay. Or right. <laughs> the next one. <laughs> Have you thought about going into politics? Because I'll with... tell you this, they wouldn't be able to argue with you, really, in the Houses of Parliament. Uh, uh, no, where, where would they start? Yeah. My <laughs> fellow is an idiot. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, violence has always been about, isn't it, like cowboys and Indians. They didn't have PlayStations and two-pack then, and there was still violence. What do you mean? In the Wild West? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you can't really blame it on stuff. It, it'll always happen. That's, you know, that's the world, isn't it? It's made up of different types and that. Again, he's right. Again, he's, he's sort of right, in a way, in his, in his innocence, in his buffoonery. I didn't hear what he's, he said. He just said there's always been violence. You know what I mean? It's sort Even, of like... Even, you know, dinosaurs, look at them. They, they cause a lot and of And then trouble. he went too far and made himself yeah. <laughs> sound <laughs> no, like a fool again. again. But I'm just saying, it's always happened, it always will. Yeah. Don't, you know, don't try and change it. Yeah. yeah. Just chill out is what you're saying. Do you, know, uh, do you know what we should do? We should, we should all get on our bike, go and find ourselves when we're <laughs> little and go, be careful what you do in life. <laughs> Oasis, Supersonic, still good. Still as good as ever. Still good on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. You'll be pleased, Rick. Go on. Ricky Anderson has uh, emailed in. Dickers! Dickers, Danderson. Oh, yeah, what are you doing, uh, Dindo? He, he's, uh, he's probably our uh, biggest fan. Diddler, you little diddler. <laughs> exactly. He has emailed in, as ever. Ricky, your show fascinates me. How do you maintain such levels of senseless drivel? <laughs> <laughs> That's from, uh, from Randers, from Randy Anders, Little as I call diddle dummers! <laughs> oh! <laughs> so, uh, thanks again, uh, um, Dudley. For that. Yep. Uh, well done, he's, uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, nice I get a there. buzz. I, I, I was disappointed last week where he didn't, what, what ask him why he's, uh, didn't email did, he us did, last week. He didn't respond last week, no, it's a shame. Probably man. busy. I mm. don't believe he had something better to do. Well, I wouldn't have thought so. I can't believe that of anyone. No. When, uh, <laughs> no, you've got this sort afternoon. of level. Exactly. Uh, intense chat. What have you done this uh, week, Carl? Well, I've had a, uh, had a few days off, haven't I? Yeah. Still, you know, doing stuff for this show and that, but <laughs> managed to get a few really. hours in. Yeah, um, not really. Just, just doing, doing nothing and, uh, bought a place. I was, I was looking at kitchens. Yeah. Weighing some of them up and, yeah. uh... Checking them out. Checking them out and, uh, also ordered a sofa. Yeah. Nice sort of... Comfy sort of le leatherish mm -hmm. sofa. Oh, a leatherish. Oh, I sofa. don't, I don't like leather sofas. 
I don't no, know. Well, yeah, but what are you picturing? A leather um, sofa. A leather sofa. Yeah, I just don't, like I, it's squeaky and it's- No, uh, this isn't. This isn't, isn't it? No, this isn't like that. But I want- I want a really old, sinky, yeah. dent of fabric. I want- That's I want a sofa that is as comfortable as a bed. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Well, if it was acceptable, you'd have a bed in your lounge, wouldn't <laughs> yeah. you? If that was allowed, yeah. without seeming We're like you were sort of, like, elderly, <laughs> Or That'd be good, and I'd have I'd have a drip going in, yeah, sort of like with nutrients. You know, I, I can't be bothered to chew now. No, lager, yeah. sort of lager with sort of uh, uh, vitamins. Vitamins, and then in, yeah. and then one going from the knob down to the toilet to the lower tree, uh, yeah. and with all the remote controls. And mm. I, I that would be amazing. To be fair, you're almost there, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> I've yeah. certainly seen the toilet tubing. My dad, Ben, right? My dad would never change his chair. My mum would try and get rid of it because it it would just fit to him, and it'd just be absolutely dilapidated, right? And what, he's, like, he's got, he had like his own chair in the lane. Yeah, his yeah. own chair, right? And then, uh, uh, and his bed, right? When, uh, they had separate rooms towards the end. Um, and his bed, right? It was just, it had it for years. And it was a big dip. It really? was just like a spoon in the middle where it was just, it was concaved. Where it said, wow. And my mum <laughs> used to just vacuum it out. Oh! Where all the little bits of like, you know, he'd have a fag in bed or he'd do his roll-ups in bed. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Oh, that's he grotesque. Him, what? Why do you like that bed? It's curved. You, you, you know, he goes, he goes, it means I can't fall out. <laughs> <laughs> the idea that it was like <laughs> in a hammer. That's great. That can't uh, be good for his back. Well, I don't think it mattered towards the end. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah. A, a hammock would be, I, I, I really yeah. would love a, a hammock. Or anything, a big bean bag would be good, wouldn't it? With a telly. A, a bean bag as big as a bed would be amazing. Yeah, but this is still the telly thing, because uh, do you, Prop yourself up a little bit to watch it. Do you watch it on the side, which is annoying? Do you turn the telly on the side? That's always- I've always wondered about that. The, we the weird thing is, right, you know, I've mentioned before about certain things that are just right, like your hand, five fingers is- is just enough, <laughs> right? One more- The sex tips. It ruins stuff. Yeah, well, one less. One less than you, you know, saying about drying your pots and that, it'd be really slippery and that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and the weird thing is, right, I think bed, that's na what nature had in- in <laughs> mind. No, yeah. but like, like, um, my mum and dad, right, they moved to this little, like, little house, right, and, um, they had loads of furniture that they collected over the years without chucking out, and they've moved to this small house, so they just had s too much furniture, right? Mm. And, uh, they had this double bed, and that was for, like, you know, when friends come round and that, they can stay there. But the problem was, he wanted to sort of put these wardrobes in the bedroom, right? Right. That went on either side of the bed. Sort of wrapped around because, the bed, yeah. yeah. but because the, s the room was so small, he thought, I can sort that out. Yeah. Right? And he sawed the bed. He sawed the bed? He sawed the whole thing, so you've got like your mattress, your bed, and everything. And what, he just sliced some off? Like a big sandwich, just c cut just, a bit off the Just cut, cut the crust about, off. About how much is that, would you say? About eight inches, six about inches. eight inches. But hold on, but that well, won't work. Because it'll all fall out the side, and then what happened to the springs and all the supports and stuff? He it'll just collapse. It, it, didn't, it didn't all come out and that. I mean, it's not the comfiest bed. <laughs> but but the weird thing is, he did it, and even though it's only like that eight inches or whatever, it totally ruined it. It's yeah. Like, well, of course it would. No, but what do you think I mean? I don't mean it ruined it as in it looks a mess. No, it would have been uncomfortable. Not even that though. Just the fact it's that little bit shorter. It's like, God, for two people, this is this is hard work now. This is like you haven't got enough room, even though it's only eight inches. Why did he- why did he build the wardrobes first without <laughs> measuring- putting the- I think he did all that and then thought, oh, it'll easily fit in there and it didn't, so he had to sort of saw a bit off the bed. <laughs> but it's just weird how only eight did inches- Did he use an electric- one of those electric saws? Yeah. And That's there was amazing. just- presumably there was just kind of- what sort of material and wood just flying everywhere. What did he do oh. with the legs? Did he have to move the legs he in moved, a bit? He moved the legs. Looking at it, right, once it's got like the- the quilt on it and everything, you wouldn't know. I was like, sure. yeah, that's alright, done a good job. Yeah. And I went to bed at night, he's like, you know, sleep well, got up in the morning after having about 45 minutes sleep and said, something not right with that. Yeah. He you goes, really you are mean? your father's son, aren't you? I said, I said, <laughs> not I said, right it's with not that. right. And he said, oh, well, I said, what have you done? It doesn't seem the same. And he said, oh, I had to shorten it sort of thing, you mm. know, to fit in the gap. I said, well, I can't sleep in it. I said, that, and there was a big kerfuffle. My man was saying, look, you have our bed then, and we'll sleep in that one. Mm. And my dad was like, sod that. Yeah. Yeah, it's ruined. You know. <laughs> some, some idiot cut it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, there was a big debate going on about where we should sleep, and I was saying, look, you know, I only come and see you, like, every couple of, you know, probably once can every I, six months. Can I- I'm not being funny, but next time we go home, can I film it? Mm. 
Just for, I mean, Channel 4 or something. Well, uh, you know, I mean, the Osbournes is not on at the moment. The yeah, Pilkingtons. No. Be... Uh, that would be extraordinary. Oh, oh, can we film it? Ho 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 ho! That's brilliant. Is anyone from Channel 5 listening to this show? Or it's... Bravo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Pilkingtons. Weird though. Weird. Play a record? Or do you want to play, do you want to play, uh, do you fancy playing something of yours? Uh, what, have we got anything? I don't know, something that was sent in to you maybe? Oh yeah, no, I'll tell you, yeah, I'd like to play this, yeah, Bronze Age Fox, uh, band from Bristol, my neck of the woods. Always uh, working, the Carl, the always working, he's always tune. working, he's on the ball, he's on the ball, he's on the bobby ball. Coldplay, the scientist, XK104.9, I'm looking to amazing with Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkerton. Carl, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I wish that's how you spoke. <laughs> <laughs> right, what are you doing then? Let's, uh, let's have a quick uh, reprise, if we could, of the uh, of the Rockbusters clues. Yeah, Rockbusters, if you've just tuned in, you've missed it this week. Uh, if you're three well, no, you haven't. That's why we're giving the clues again. Yeah, I know, but if they haven't. Hey, What? Yeah. Say if they've been busy. Just, just give the clues again. <laughs> um, oh, first one. Oh, God. Um, don't argue with him, because he, he isn't going to change his mind. That's AA. <laughs> Second one, um, he always gets what he, uh, he always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. That's P, yeah. And the third and final one, oh, I might have to put that woman in the oven. A, B. Interesting. Are we telling him or still- No, 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 they, they, yeah. people have still got a chance to win those extraordinary prizes. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. We've still got only. features to come though, Steve. It's Go incredible. On. We've still got Ritual, we got where, like, remember last time, people in India, it's good to have a flat head. <laughs> yeah. We've got Do We Need em. Mm. I've got That's Ridiculous. That's a great game. What should we do next? What should we do next? It's too much. We, uh, get Do We Need em out of the way. Let's get get Do We Need em out of the way. Yeah, just, uh, let's, uh, let's explain it again. If you're new, um, I'm sort of on a bit of a mission to find out, you know, we've got a lot of animals and insects in the world and stuff. Yeah. Um, do we need them all? <laughs> it still amuses me. <laughs> so we've found out we've got to keep jellyfish. We've done octopus. Just yeah. said we've got to keep them. This week, snails. Do we need them? Just doing some research, uh -huh. right? Um, I'm sort of working my way through different creatures and insects and stuff that's on the planet. Yeah. Right? Um, and finding out if we need them or not. Right? Yeah. Do you know much about snails? Well, um, sea snails? Well, yeah. Sea snails in general. Um, I don't know much about snails, land snails, I know a bit about sea snails, like whelks, top shells, that sort of thing. Would you say they're important? Um, what sort of sense do you mean by important? Say if we had to sort of get rid of some animals and insects and that, because we're running out of room. Do you know what I mean? Because I'll tell you what I know about some snails. I don't know if this applies to sea snails as well. I mean, I called you today because a lot of other places are, are shut. Yeah. Right? So, um, I know um, they like to eat stamps, apparently. The glue on stamps. They right. love it. Right? Right. Um, apparently a lot of um, letters and stuff aren't getting to where they're meant to be getting because snails are crawling into letter boxes and eating right. the stamps. That obviously doesn't apply to the sea ones. Mm. But that, that's a problem they're causing. All oh, right. Uh, are you, were you aware of that? No. I well, don't know. Bet you're glad you answered the phone today. Right. They love beer. Beer, yeah. Who doesn't? And also, I don't know if this is right, but I heard that they sleep for 13 years or can do. Right. I've, I wouldn't know if they can sleep for 13 years or not. But I mean, sea snails are pretty important. Yeah, they're, they're, they do quite a good job in the sea. They uh, um, graze on algae in there. But, they but provide food for other other animals. I mean, you can say that about any fish, you know, or any animal. Why do they why do they exist? Would Would you be know. upset if you know someone said we're getting rid of them? Oh yeah, yeah. You would they're, be. They're an animal, you know. I wouldn't forget being like favoritism and all that. I get for them, right? There'll yeah. be other things knocking around. You can sort of spend your time looking after. You'll still have a job. Don't be worrying about that because I'm not going to get rid of all the fish. Jellyfish need looking after, so you're safe. Do we need them? Come on, there's loads of people saying, come on, we've got to move on through the animals, and you're holding them up saying, well, I, I want to keep them. Well, who's, who's saying we need to... That just sounds a bit, just sounds a bit crazy to me. Just, just imagine. Do you know what I mean? And, and they would come to you because you're working in an aquarium, so they'd, they'd be asking for your advice. Right. 
and you're slowing it down. Well, they asked for my advice and I'm giving it to them, so, you know, that's what I think, anyway. Yeah, but snails, you know, I mean, like I say, they, they drink beer and that, you know. What do, what do they do apart from uh, some food for a, for a whelk? They were, they were around, uh, descendants around a lot longer, uh, longer than we have been. Yeah, they've been around a long time, but what have they done? Well, they survived that long, so they must be doing something pretty good. Well, apparently they sleep for 13 years, so really, even though they've been around for ages... I, 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 was, I think that sounds a bit... I don't think they sleep for 13 years. Not all, I mean, not all of them, just, just, the, just the tired ones. So, snails, do we need them? Well, yeah, I just think they've got a, just as, you know, it's not for us to say, do we need them or not, we can't just... So, so you think we should keep them? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, 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 I'm proud of you. That he was, was getting really quite annoying. I know. Why did he, what did he think he was doing? What? <laughs> I don't know what you tell these people. I mean, you don't get their permission to play this out, do you? You well, just don't tell the them. the thing is, right, <laughs> I, yeah, I sort of told him what it was about, but we won't say who he is or where he works, because yeah. it doesn't matter. I just needed to speak so, to someone who knows. <laughs> I know the fact that you were trying to get an answer out of him by suggesting that he would be safe because <laughs> he could look after jellyfish if he gave the okay to destroy snails. <laughs> he was I, getting livid, you can oh tell. Oh, God. Brilliant. So oh. they've been around a long time, but what have they done? <laughs> well, they done? that was great, Carl. Play a record. Oh, well done. Uh, bit of Amy Man. Oh, I'm obsessed with this song, Red Vines. It's, it's brilliant. <laughs> I love that. Amy Man, Red Vines, XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Um, you mentioned earlier when we had our um, regular email from uh, Dickie Anderson. Yeah. Randers, as I call him. Dandy Sam. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, you mentioned that, because we didn't get anything from him last week. We didn't no. get uh, anything from him last week. Anyway, uh, he's obviously listening, um, <laughs> uh, Rich, because he's emailed in to explain uh, his absence. Dear Ricky, sorry for not tuning in last week, only I was in uh, HMV returning the 14 copies of The Office I got for Christmas. <laughs> That's, uh... <laughs> That's from Randers. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> he's, he's explained himself. Oh, he's dear. excused himself. Oh, Anders, we should get him on one day. Yeah. Right, okay, Carl. That's ridiculous. Three amazing scientific facts, one of which is spurious. Okay? Oh, yeah. Okay, one. Um, girls can't throw because the part of their brain that allow men to throw properly in a girl is used up in emotion. Two. Gravity isn't instantaneous, it works at the speed of light, the force of gravity. Three, statistically, you're more likely to be trampled by a donkey than dying in a plane crash. Now, even though the last one sounds daft, I think I, I've read that, about the donkey thing. Okay. Um, <coughs> so, girls... What's the first one? The, the Girl, girls can't throw properly because the part of the brain <coughs> that allow men to throw is yeah, used up in emotion yeah, in a woman. Yeah. Gravity in, isn't instantaneous. It, it works at the speed of light. So when you drop something, it, the force kicks in at the speed of light. What do you reckon, Steve? Well, it's well, not for me to say. Is this a trick one where none of them are ridiculous? Or one no, of one, of one, one, of, one of those three... One of those three is not true. Right, well, it's definitely not the donkey, right? So... Uh, I reckon the, uh, the girl one, throwing stuff. Is ridiculous. Yeah. Correct. Well done. Well Very done. Very well done indeed. Yeah. Very well done indeed. That's two out of two he's got so far. Well, there you yeah. go. Well, yeah. well, I'll teach you some stuff now. <laughs> right? I've, so I just say, I've always been fascinated by the, uh, the donkey fact, because it is an extraordinary fact that more people are killed apparently by donkeys. Yeah. Than they are by airplane crashes. Well, I suppose in countries where they're used, and, yeah. you know, used a lot, that, you know, they, um, 
they go a bit mad and squash but, it. But my concern is that <coughs> there's, when you go on a plane, there's so many checks. I mean, it takes them 40 minutes to go through all the checks, the air pressure, the cabin pressure, the fuel, yeah. checking the, you know, flights, the takeoff, all the rest of it. Our checks for donkeys. Nothing. Did someone close the gate? I think so. Exactly, that's yeah. it. That's our, that's is our he donkey annoyed? Checks. Is he annoyed or not? <laughs> yeah. You're not working him too hard, are you? Yeah, yeah. He's got his hand. Is there two, is there two holes for the ears? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I think that's what's happening. I don't think it's accident. I think they're picking us off. I think they're yeah. so annoyed that a nickname for them is ass. Yeah. And they've got to wear the little hat, you know, they, they get, they've got to ride kids, you know, give kids rides on the beach and that. I think they're just sort of annoyed. Yeah. Maybe they're sort of just picking us off one by one. Yeah. Teaching us a lesson. Not, if we had the same stringent checks <laughs> exactly. on donkeys as we do on intern national flights, maybe exactly. there'd be a little less death. <laughs> exactly. Wise words. <laughs> Cheers. Wise, <laughs> if slightly incoherent <laughs> words. <laughs> Go so, on, Carl. Got that right. Um, so, um, <laughs> acid. I would sort you out with some science. Brilliant. I forgot the puns in mind, didn't I? I forgot the puns. Yeah. Go on. Right, so, um, yeah, you asked to sort of be taught some science and that last week after being taught about war, so, yeah. uh, did some research. <laughs> and, um, there's a few things, I think we'll just cover, cover one of them now. Go on. Um, we've talked a lot about airy kids. <laughs> <laughs> we have discussed that I love that a lot. the fact that Simon Sharma has never started a programme <laughs> no. like that. Uh, the, the Jacobites. We've talked a lot about hairy kids. <laughs> Go on. It's, it's a little bit, I mean, it's not your traditional science stuff, but sure. it's still well, interesting and it's a little bit, you know, it's still Yeah, we've talked about hairy kids. We, are, we have, disproportionately, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I think this show's talked about hairy kids more than any other radio yeah. show. Well, it's, it's one that- Sorry, I noticed both of you there dropped the H, or the H, or however it's I, called. I had to. So, it, airy, we airy obviously kids, mean yeah. hairy, yeah. hairy children, not yeah. um, sort of airy, kind of light-headed or- Yeah. Well, there was, there was the case of the, uh, <laughs> the one who lived in China. Yeah. And, uh- Which was weird for two reasons, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, go on. Uh, one was like, he was covered in air. That's all really weird. And yeah. the doctor sort of checked him over and said, well, yeah, he is airy, but he's quite healthy apart from, he had a little bit of eczema <laughs> and a boil. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that was the main bit of the story, wasn't it? Yeah. But this one, right, we have sort of talked about it, and, uh, you weren't having any of it at the time. What? This, this next bit of science I'm telling you about. Go, Go on then. Right? Um, remember when I told you about a lad, he was living at home with his mum and dad, right, everything's, you know, normal life, go out of school, that sort of thing. Yeah. Then, I think his mum and dad had an argument, and it kicked off a bit and he thought, I'm sick of this, it's happening all the time now, they kept having arguments, so the kid, Ran off into the woods. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Right. God. Now he he left. He went and ran in the woods, and he ended up living with some monkeys. Right. <laughs> right. And he thought this isn't a bad life. You know, there's no arguments going on. Sure. He was getting on with them. Um, <laughs> and the weird he loved thing bananas. is, this <laughs> this is where the science bit comes in. Oh, sure. Yeah. He grew a load of air on his body. That's not true. It's not true. It is true. It's an acquired characteristic. It's the, it, 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 I bet someone will back me up on this. But th no, no, you can't, you, you can't grow hair like that. You might get a little bit, uh, more downy or they might, uh, the erectile tissue might, uh, you know, they won't fall out as much that would, you know, but you don't actually grow a big mane if well, you're cold and you're a human. Well, he did. He did. This lad did. I know it sounds a bit strange in that, but he, he was living with the monkeys, um, <laughs> and because it was cold, his body reacted listen, to Listen, listen. He was no hairier than he would have been if he was walking around naked on a cold day, with or without living with monkeys. The it, fact that he was living with monkeys makes no difference. No, I know, but I'm trying to get, you know, picture it in your head what it's like. Although Mickey Dolenz was always pretty hairy. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, he was living with them, and, um, he went into town or something one day. Oh, yeah. To get some food, <laughs> and the people there were like, hang on a minute, that isn't a monkey. Mm. Um, well, he, went, he went in naked. <laughs> no, he was there covered in hair. Yeah. yeah, but naked, but covered in hair. So it was decent. It was. It was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they, they. That was a weird thing. They thought it was a monkey in the shop. And <laughs> so went, presumably he had a big long beard as well because he couldn't shave, could he? No, no. He just covered. He looked like a monkey. And they were happy to serve the monkey, <laughs> were they? There's a the monkey. How did he walk? How did he milk. walk? How did he walk, Carl? Did he walk start upright or? Whistling along. The, just pi to the picture that I saw on the internet, he was on all fours, but I don't know was. if that's when he was running he was. away after he did, did sort of, you know, realised he was a kid. But this was a picture. So he was a kid as well. He wasn't even like an adult with the beard. No, he was a kid. Brilliant, brilliant. And the, the beard went, kicked in a little bit. So earlier. listen. So the Go people on. caught him. You're an idiot. The people caught him. Yeah. Shaved him. Right. Got it all off. Didn't grow back again. Right. It just. It You're grew. an idiot. 
Well, like I say, people will have heard this story or read about it. You're an idiot. And they'll email in. They don't let me down. And they'll agree that you're an and idiot. The, no, no, they'll they'll have seen the story. You're an idiot. So that's a little bit of science. <laughs> you're an idiot. Did you see the stylish kids in the riot? Yeah, I you, my love. Libertines, time for heroes and XFM 104.9. Right, okay, so have you got anything that is science as opposed to nonsense? Well, um... Kid went off with some monkeys, grew air, yeah. came back, shaved him, it didn't grow back. I mean, just think. Right, something else. Um, there's a few things I found. Yeah. Um, there's a fella... Oh, God. Uh, who had hiccups for 69 years. <laughs> that was a bit annoying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. there's a dog with the wig that we've discussed. <laughs> uh, Imagine if you just tuned in. <laughs> yeah. There's the dog with the wig that we've already discussed. Uh... Did we discuss that? that? Not really. Did I not tell you what he said? I did, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, what else have I got? Well, there's something here that you sort of know. Is this going out live? At the yeah, moment? this is happening, right? right? Go on. But remember when you talked about, um, sponges? Yeah. If you get a red sponge and a blue sponge? You liquidise them, pour them back into a tank, after a few hours, that they, they know which was which and they, they reform as a red sponge and a, and a blue sponge. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was weird when you told me. Yeah. Looked it up, did a bit of research. Yeah. Thought that sort of sciency. Yeah. Um, you can do the same thing with a mouse's brain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Explain a bit more. No, you can't. Uh, if, if you get a dead mouse, yep. um, put its brain into a blender, you know, blend it up, um, leave it standing for a bit. Making that up, aren't you? You get, you're confusing this, you watch Nigella Lawson make some sort of pudding. No, <laughs> What no. do you mean? What, do you, wait, it, it, wait, it won't work with a brain. Well, it, it does with a, I mean, not, not human brain. Don't be trying although, that. But although... No, a mouse, a mouse one. <laughs> a mouse one. And what happens? It sort of reforms. Goes back together again. No, it's, it, you know. Because apparently it's made up of the same stuff as... But it doesn't, does it? Because if it's dead, if it's a, if it's a dead brain, the cells can't act anyway. The fact the sponge is that it doesn't kill the cells, it liquidises them, it doesn't kill the cells. Yeah. So it couldn't be a dead brain anyway. It would have to be a live brain taken out from a live mouse, for the cells to be getting oxygen and working and, and being sensitive to each other, and that, uh, I, I don't see how that could work like it does in sponges. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I, do you know what I mean? You're not a scientist. I, I've sure. just sort of read it and yeah. <laughs> gone, oh, that's, that's interesting, I'll tell Ricky and Steve about it. Yeah, yeah. You're, You're quizzing me as it. if I've come up with it, and no. someone else has done it and said yeah. it works. Mm. Sure. So I'm not, do you think, I'm not- Do you think ghosts are behind it, or do you think there's a scientific explanation for it? No, it's just, uh, it's just one of them weird things, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, that's, uh, that's what you sort of signs covered yeah, for this yeah. week. Well, that was another barnstorming feature. <laughs> 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 is that it? Is that the two things you <laughs> got this week? Thanks very much for that. Well, that, yeah, yeah, that, I mean, is the There's nothing behind them, do you know what I mean by this? There's not a, there's not like a weight of intellect behind these facts. Why don't it? you make that your science project for this week? Find a dead mouse somewhere, Carl, and a <laughs> blender, <laughs> and we'll bring that in next week, we'll do it live on air and see what happens. <laughs> oh. Well. Do you feel sort of let down a little bit sometimes with our reactions? Well, what are you expecting us to do? What are you expecting us to just like look at you, open mouthed, staring at you in awe? Just like oh god, yeah, where did you find that out? And like, yeah, but we, we know, ask, we you know, never tell us. We know where you found it out. You looked on the internet and a strange homemade website by a maniac somewhere uh, who puts on stupid things that he heard through Chinese whispers. It's that's where you get your information from. I, I doubt that anything you've ever come up with is, is verified. If it is, it's luck. But what, what do you expect me to do <laughs> for you? Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm just- <coughs> You know, I'd like to know what the source of the information is. I'd like it to be, you know, a research study by the University of Columbia, rather than, you know, a guy who calls himself Mr. Pickles. <laughs> <laughs> on a website somewhere, <laughs> www.lunatics.com. <laughs> I mean, oh god. Something, some kind of evidence, do you know what I mean? I'll go, I must warn you now, you know that Steven Spielberg thing's coming, Taken, yeah? About alien abduction. When you watch it, just remember this, it's not a documentary, okay? 
All right. And All right. You remember our ET? We were yeah. discussing that earlier. You know that's not fact. <laughs> Factual fact. Brilliant. Black Star Radiohead from the Benz on XFM 104.9. Rick, John has emailed in. Yes. It looks here like he's maybe trawled the web himself. I mean, I don't know if people just immediately leap onto the web every time Carl says something in, in, in his defence. I think our listeners are always on the web. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, he seems like he's reprinted here a news story, which seems to confirm Carl's monkey boy story. Yeah, what was the news Doctor's story? Doctor's baffled by boy six covered in ape-like hair. Doctors in Kazakhstan are baffled after finding a six-year-old boy covered in ape-like hair. Yeah. The boy, called Able, was found in a remote mountain village close to the Chinese border. He's covered in thick hair from head to toe and has an oval-shaped skull. Doctors suspect nuclear radiation or a genetic disorder may be responsible. Fine. Um, but it's an interesting bit But here. But sorry, it's not that you could have genetic defects. I've seen lots of people born with, um, long noses, five feet, etc. I'm saying You've that he wasn't Bristol, normal. <laughs> he, he wasn't normal and then went to live with, um, monkeys and grew the hair. <laughs> well, that's, that's my true. point. But it says his mother and father are distant relatives. Such marriages are common in the Kazakhstan mountain hamlets. Now, uh, the village elders were consulted as to what to do with him, right? Now, these are the village elders. These are the, these are the wise men of the village. These are the people, presumably, that all year long are telling the, the village how to live, how to survive. Yeah. You're in charge because you've lived longest. You're, yeah, exactly. You're presumably are solving any kind of moral conundrums, yeah. any sort of awkward things. Do you know what they suggested that they do with their hairy son? Go on. Send him to the circus. <laughs> <laughs> the cow's not in. Put him in the circus. <laughs> <laughs> that was what they suggested, and uh, the mother actually wanted him to go to school. Um, Instead of the circus. I don't know, school or circus, I don't know. <laughs> we don't know what's better for him. <laughs> exactly. I'm not sure. <laughs> we must consult the elders. What do you think, Carl? Uh, it's not a bad life, is it? <laughs> what, the circus? Yeah. Well, you Kids ran away from it. it. Yeah. Love it. But remember that thing that I saw about that fella who, uh, I don't know if you talk about it really, it's a bit. Go on. Tell us now. You've hooked me. Come on. You can say it. It's okay. What, are you worried that it might be insulting to someone? Well, it's not, it's not nice, but... It, well, you're it not taking the mickey out of it. You're telling us... Go on. It's just, it was in that book again that you got me. You know, the book full of weird people. Go and, on. And things that are wrong with them and airy people and... Yeah. Like with three legs and that. There was a fella, mm. um, basically just a head and, uh, <laughs> and a little body on a skateboard. <laughs> yeah. All right? Picture of him having a shave. And he was shaving with his, with his mouth bit, like uh, that. With his tongue? <laughs> like that on the radio. Yeah. Just like Carl is now doing an impression of a man shaving with his mouth. Yeah. Well, it's just a head, bear in mind. He's doing an impression. Imagine a head <laughs> with a very tiny body on a skateboard shaving with its tongue. That's what Carl was doing. Oh, uh, and he was depressed because he kept getting hats for Christmas. <laughs> but, but, but if you were him, you would just grow a beard, wouldn't you, rather than... <laughs> Oh, Why? Well, rather than go through all but that hassle. But he the wheels of his skateboard. <laughs> so it's what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. Uh, that was P. Uh, that was Pix's. Right. <laughs> Picks his. Picks his. It kind of works, yeah. <laughs> and the uh, third one. I'll oh, I'll let uh, you have that one. I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to put that woman in an oven. That was A B. That was Anita Baker. <laughs> Anita Baker. <laughs> it's good. Anita Baker. Anita yeah, Baker. I'll let you have all three today. So, uh, You've done well. So, do you want to pick a winner, Steve? Well done to Mark Ledder from Bow. He wins those fairly mediocre prizes. <laughs> 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 Enjoy them. Oh, it. brilliant. Oh, well, we've had a few laughs. A few we've had a few laughs, a few tears, a few scientific breakthroughs. <laughs> exactly. Um, Gotta get a picture of Carl somewhere in the national press. Just his little round head there. Add an email here. Carl is trying to distract attention from the fact that he is a monkey raised among humans and horses and has failed to develop hair. It's- uh, I can just imagine him yeah. being the second cleverest in a troop of monkeys. <laughs> you know what I mean? Second cleverest. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, it- 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 Picking fleas out of their hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at his little face. I'll tell you what. Pete, I'm gonna get you- I'm gonna get a picture of you. Just put it in the radio section of Pete. Just- this is what Carl looks like. Oh, another email. Someone said, um, when the monkey boy went to the shops, he was naked. Where did he keep his money? <laughs> Good point. It didn't happen then. Right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So that's that. We didn't even do all, all, uh... What do you we mean? Didn't get, we didn't get round to ritual. Oh, come on. Give no, us ritual. We, haven't, we, haven't really we have, quickly, quickly. No, it's... We have got time. Just do it. Why haven't we got time? It's ten two. Right. Well, we've got a long track to finish on. Well, just do it. It's... Do are it! You, are you familiar with the place called, uh... <laughs> Go on. 
Easter Island. Yes. yes. Yeah. Do you know what they do out there? Uh, eat eggs. Right. I don't know. Well, Go, that's on. Close. Go on. Go right. on. What they do, right, there's, uh, there's a load of people living on an island. Yeah. Easter Island? And <laughs> to find out who's gonna be running the place, <laughs> They, um... They don't they, hold elections, do they? They have these, well, they have these birds that lay, like, expensive eggs on a, on an island. Expensive eggs! Yeah. They lay expensive eggs! Fabergé eggs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, go on. On this island. Yeah. Uh, Easter once Island? Once a year, once a year. No, o off, off it, like, about, oh, yeah. about two miles out. Right? Oh, yeah. And Whitson Island. And the sea, yeah. the sea. Shrew Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, Patrick Tuesday. Just tell us! Right? No, 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 you, we'll no, no, tell us! Right, finish next it now. Week, you, week. Don't you dare! Oh, I'll, I'll see you later. Right? Johnny right. Mitchell. You've. Blue Motel Room from the album oh, Nigeria. It's a song for ladies this week. Thanks for listening. Next week, we'll be still on.